you will not arrive at his like actual accurate opinion from watching this video because it's trying to be as neutral as possible. And especially when you're using like Jerusalem Post or or uh, you know Wikipedia exclusively that covers a lot of the I, um, covers a lot of the, the yeah, yeah I did not what the fuck dude. But Ooh. in this hundred year history, there's a lot of aspects of the story that I think get left out in his argument that certainly makes it seem like Israel is maybe not a small bean, but like had to do this stuff. And the security concerns, yeah, the security concerns have always been uh, the reason why Israel justifies what it does. So in my opinion, stating that without talking about how utterly ridiculous and inhumane it is, okay, is, is basically doing, uh, you know, a, a, a Israeli propaganda pretty much. Hassan, it's really big. <laughs> Here he is. Mike. Hassan Abi, it's really big of you to say that. He's probably one of the biggest debate pervert fluffers out there. Always trying to attack people that don't like them. <laughs> Bro, if this fucking slimy, miserable fucking invertebrate cuck piece of shit had any idea how fucking difficult it is to exist in a position where I am too left wing for most of, for even a lot of the liberals, where especially the right wingers, and where I'm too not fucking whatever the fuck soy bullshit this guy's on to uh, please his crowd. I guess we gotta do the uh, Hassan reaction. We gotta do it someday. Ooh. Well, I do wanna do something different. Let's um, go. Different. I got <laughs> permission from uh, Loner Box to watch his uh, 100 Years of Gaza on the broadcast, and I think that that'll be pretty informative. I know that a lot of people don't, uh, you know, a, a lot of people <laughs> have probably seen like his debates or some shit. I don't know anything about no. him personally, but as far as I understand, as far as I understand, I've only seen one video of his. Here you go. Netanyahu's insanely dishonest interview with Lex Fridman. That video was very good. Hey. In that video, he also promotes another channel called Beast Process. Okay. Hey. That channel is also very good and very Ooh. informative, which is precisely the reason why I did not even think for even a brief moment that, th th that he was... <laughs> uh, that he was like in any way, shape, or form a a Zionist. Loner now box. there might be some Smarty criticisms of this video, which uh, you know I'll I'll yeah I'll admit I don't know if he's is he against the ceasefire. Like these are everything I've heard about Loner Box is always from people in the chat. I've never heard <laughs> I, I I I've never seen something yeah. from him that makes me think that uh, he's wrong on the history. I don't know if he's like super pro Israel or not, but ultimately what I do know is historically I, these are my favorite people. These are my favorite people. These fucking Oh no, Hassan. No, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that Loner Box defended aristocracy. No, no, Hassan, before it's too late. Hank! No! Hank! <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. I don't agree. Yeah, hey, she's to the right of me. I'll say that. There's a lot. She does a lot she says I don't agree with. But she has a good approach. She knows the history. She got a good way. She's uh, empathetic. She's ultimately a pro-Palestinian state. At the end of the day, she wants them to have their rights and all that shit. Just because we disagree on how to get there and some events in the past, fuck off. Yeah, I say it. I will never betray aristocracy. I don't care how cringe she sometimes gets on Twitter. I don't th does Hassan even know who aristocracy is? <laughs> like, fuck me. This chat is full of J-dams. It does sound like that. It does have that ring. Lonerbox is not a politics dude. He's just a musician who fell in love with you and did everything possible to one day cross paths with you. <laughs> okay. That's probably the nicest uh, hater I'm going to see in this chat. Naomi Chance, thanks for the $2. All of Hassan's chat probably thinks you're a lib. I mean, that's fine. But people think lib equals Zionist equals fascist equals Hitler. I don't know. It's, uh, there's, a, there's a... There's a long chain box. You of associations. It's like, yeah, it's like very much a word association. They have very artistic ways of looking at the world. Speaking, his videos have been decent hey. on this matter, yes. or at least the one video that I watched. You can't arrive at that conclusion. You cannot arrive at the conclusion that uh, that that 
uh, he's doing Zionist propaganda. <laughs> if you look at the actual history, yeah, openly. All right. This is a Palestinian man playing his homemade. Damn. Me Don't and Hassan. You smarmy. Up against. Bastard. Up against the storm of false internet allegations. Let's go. Hassan knows we were this because we're both uh, Middle Eastern. You know, we're both. We're both from the Mediterranean. All you guys, all these fucking white leftists, these non-Mediterranean cucks, they can bounce, okay? Flute to an audience of British soldiers in 1941. On, it's one of only a few pictures you can find on Google of the old village of Dimra, a small farming <laughs> community of just over 500 people, one kilometer north of <laughs> no! the Gaza Strip. In October 1948, <laughs> five months into the Israeli-Arab War, the women and children of Dimra were evacuated as the IDF made their advance into the south. Uh, first of all, did he say... Well, one, he's using Benny Morris, so... Uh-oh. That's interesting. Um, secondly, <laughs> I mean, but it's fine. Wait, don't uh, say... Again, it, criticize Benny Morris's politics all you want. Um, his description of the history is good. We, we, that, the 750,000 number. We have that because of, with that, that is verified by Benny Morris. Like, yeah, yeah fuck. I, Pape doesn't mention Dimra in his book. So, yeah, okay. It, it's fine. It just it, yeah. entirely dependent on like what you use with that, what you do with that information. Mm. Um, I think he also mentioned the IDF, but at this point, it's the IDF of October, November, 1948 was radically different. It's not the IDF at this point. Yeah, it is. Um, the IDF was formed after um, the Declaration of Independence, wasn't it? 48, yeah. This is the IDF, no? Was Operation Europe not the IDF? Was that still the Haganah? They, they, yeah. Well, this was the operation. The Haganah became the IDF uh, after the Declaration of Independence, I thought. Yeah, it was the IDF. Yeah. He's thinking pre forty. He's thinking pre uh, declaration of war. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, no, they were the IDF at this time. Yeah, uh, yeah. It says here the IDF of, of October was radically different. Oh yeah, he's reading that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because before they were the Haganah. Yeah. So at this point, these are Zionist uh, brigades. They do resemble a standing military. The difference is that uh, I guess I mean there's there's varying degrees of brutality that they engaged in. Lehi being. Uh, Lehi being the absolute worst of the worst, also mm. known as a pejor uh, pejoratively known as the Stern Gang, the Stern uh, self-described terrorists, those who even tried to uh, uh, cut a deal with, uh, cut a deal with uh, uh, Nazi Germany. LB is friends with a monarchist Zionist apartheid slash genocide denier from South Africa named Aristocracy, and came to her defense before. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I would love to know which uh, genocide she denies. I think she actually, um, she doesn't think the Holodomor was a genocide. She, she actually takes the tanky side on that one. Um, ethnic cleansing that occurred here. I, I think that's, I mean, he's correct. I don't think he said anything wrong. I'm just saying that I, I wouldn't consider it to be the IDF, but instead at this point is a, a Haganah. Uh, no, but he's saying right up here they were the IDF. This is October. This is, they are the IDF at this point. The Hag that's why he's saying it was radically different because the Israeli army before was the Haganah. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, we got that. That's fine. Irgun and, uh, and Lehi uh, are the three most prominent brigades, Haganah being the... As the IDF was... He's probably thinking of Der Yassin. Whereas I'm talking about the actual war. This is during the war. Yeah. I mean, it's a collection of those uh, uh, different uh, brigades. Rocco. Five dollars, thanks very much. Why do people focus on Ergon and the Stern Gang, but completely ignore Al Husseini's role on the Arab-Palestinian formation formation of national identity, Arab Nazis? Um, because people who have a side, people who want to, uh, I guess, as Hassan would say, like if they want to propagandize. It's interesting that you call me a propagandist because I want to play you. This was your reaction to when the hospital. Got I'm bombed. a propagandist. Well, no, no, for the record, I'm, no, no, I'm not calling I'm a you propagandist. that. Propagandist, or if they want to uh, be, well, maybe just not, not propaganda, like ideologues. If you're, if you're like an ideologue, you're going to select your facts from one side that supports one side. That's what you're going to do. Um, I don't think Hassan would deny Al Husseini. The other difference is that um, Al Husseini was not Al Husseini was a very 
appointed in a very unaccountable way. He was appointed in a, in like a feudal system. So, and also Al Husseini didn't uh, remove seven hundred fifty thousand people from their homes. He didn't uproot seven hundred fifty thousand people. So, uh, he would have if he could. He'd have done a lot worse, but he didn't. So, yeah. why is Chat trying so hard to make Hassan hate Lorna Box? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let them fight. Let them try. The thing is, if Hassan ever decided to hate me, I don't think it would affect me in the slightest. Like, because my audience is not his audience. So. A crumbling stonewater basin, concrete rubble from houses, and a destroyed well are nearly all that remain. A watering trough for cows has been placed on what appears to be a concrete fragment from a former house. The well is topped with an old, non-operating water pump. More debris lies in a wooden portion of the site near a Jewish cemetery. Some cactuses that formerly served as a fence, as well as shrubs and thorny plants, grow on adjacent lands. This would be the fate of several other villages around the Gaza Strip. A few, like Dimra, were built over. The others were destroyed or abandoned. As their populations struggled to make a new life for themselves in Gaza, the lands surrounding their old villages would become home to a new Israeli population as several communities were founded in the area. I mean, this is not them. wrong. This is, I don't know why you guys are mad at his, his coverage of this. This is completely, he's already, this, this, yes. so far, all of this, as Lodabon. long as it doesn't say it was you totally valid and totally justifiable because mm. uh, Jews were under attack everywhere, yeah. is, is uh, I wouldn't completely say that. correct. I don't know why. Uh, like the town is true. That would actually be a pretty bad take to say that because quite a lot of those villagers were uh, not really posing much of a threat. They wanted the land. They wanted those areas <clears throat> because it would ease the IDF's passage along the, uh, along the, to the, between the front lines and the, and the back, especially to clear the Jerusalem corridor. That's why they did it. Not because they were threatened by every villager that got fucking killed or forced out. Um, and also, a lot of liberties were taken, even when they said, um, remove them if they pose a threat, if there are militants there. Uh, we know that quite a lot of those soldiers just took liberties and didn't really care if there was a threat. So, yeah. <laughs> On October 7th... <laughs> so? No one gives a fuck about the dead guy in <laughs> Okay, yeah. 2023, Hamas launched a coordinated surprise attack on Israel codenamed Al-Aqsa Flood. They began with a barrage of thousands of rockets as their militants broke through the Gaza border, attacking IDF bases and civilian communities. <laughs> Even by their own video uploads, it's clear that Hamas made no distinction between civilian and military targets, or even between adults and children. Over 1,400 Israelis were killed and at least 200 taken hostage. Israel declared a state of war the same day, and as they fought to secure the border, they began what would be the most intense airstrike campaign. Oh, it started on October 7th? No, dude, come on. This is literally Gaza the last 100 years. It's... <laughs> You're ridiculous if you think that he's just going to sit there and only talk about October 7th when the entire video is about what predates October 7th. I just love the... <laughs> Everybody calm down, okay? Yeah, that's history. good advice. I'm sure by now you've heard at least a uh -oh. few people's opinions on the matter. Second thought, oh no. <laughs> oh shit, he's going to... Oh no. Many opinions... Uh, we've seen a lot of pro-Israel people turn into Howard Stern after 9-11. A lot of pro-Palestinian people turn into, I don't know, Bin Laden after 9-11. Thank you very much. He says, did the Palestinians actually take civilian hostage or is that fake news? Um, I don't care. Yeah, the occupiers <laughs> I don't, are not yeah. civilians. That, that is what it comes yeah. down to. Like if, imagine, French, yeah. like if, if Sorry, uh, Germany, you know, let's say Germany, to, mm -hmm. to be non-controversial, invaded the United States. And they, they said, you know what, Cincinnati, Ohio is our ancestral home. And, you know, everyone knows mm. that's blatantly false. But they, they take your home, they murder your grandma, they bulldoze like your neighbor's house. Are those people mm. civilians there? No, they're occupiers, and those those are criminals. Yeah. That that is, there are no mm. civilians there in the illegal military occupation. Yeah. yeah, 
So that's number one, um, very beautifully put. Number two, uh, much more importantly, um, the track record of Palestinians has been a thousand times better than that of mm -hmm. the Israeli occupation. Despite the fact that Israeli op occupation does not need to brutalize, they already have all the power. Yeah. Um, but they still choose to do far, 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 far worse. Um, the worst that will happen to a person in Palestinian custody is that they're going to be uh, um, like auctioned off for a prisoner swap, mm -hmm. which is the historic track record also. Yeah. Um, and. I've had my own opinions, many opinions. You can have a look through my live channel if you want all the opinions. But for this one, I want to take a step back and hopefully just leave you with a better understanding of what exactly led us up to here. Well, I disagree. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Verbiage and statements of second thought mm -hmm. on that particular matter. I would not compare <laughs> his words to Bin Laden, it's... especially because. Uh, yeah, it's probably fair. I hope this video will show that there is a reason as to why one Hamas came to power, mm -hmm. and two, um, there is a there is a reason as to how this violence materialized. I don't know if any of that excuses. Um... That doesn't. None of that contextualizes what JT said. It's true. Hamas doesn't come out of fucking nowhere. Like Yassin, even Yassin, who was um, first of all nonviolent, the founder of Hamas, was first nonviolent. Then there were hesitants. Uh, there were hesitancies about violence. They were not sure really about like they were divided on whether or not they wanted to do uh, targeting civilians, for example. Um, and then it was after. That Goldstein guy went into that mosque in Hebron and just massacred like 30 people that Yassin completely flipped. And then, Hasa and then Hamas's policy became, uh, fuck them, kill them all, basically. Yeah. They didn't, ca they didn't care about the difference at that point. Um, so yeah, like Yassin was radicalized by <laughs> Israeli violence, uh, by Israeli terrorism. Um, uh, which is, yeah, I don't know, the birth of Hamas. Is, I wish I could have done a whole video on just the birth of Hamas because it's so interesting, the way that that all happened. But, I mean, Second Thought's tweet was... Atrocities in quotation marks. Genocidal settlers on the receiving end. This is what liberation struggle looks like. Imagine someone comes to your town, murders your neighbors, kicks you out of the of the home your family lived in for generations, relocates you to an open-air prison. Again, the, the people who, most of the people who were killed didn't do this. this. The people at the festival didn't do any of this. And then are those occupier civilians? No. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty Bin Laden. Like, it's pretty Bin Laden-esque. Even fucking Hezbollah. Nasrallah was trying to avoid. Did you notice that um, Nasrallah was trying to say that the civilians were killed actually by IDF crossfire because of those TikTok videos? Even he is hesitant to use language like this. Fucking Nasrallah is hesitant to publicly say shit like this. And you know why? It's because he's not white enough to say shit like this, okay? <laughs> Crab Navy General, thanks for the 499. During that ad break, he did say explicitly, I don't stand by what Second Thought said. Prove me wrong. No, I, I know he, he said that in the bit that I watched as well. Yeah, of course he doesn't. Yeah. Because as much as I uh, have disagreements with Hassan, like politically, like I think he, at the end of the day, he's a fucking human being, whereas Second Thought is more of a, a kind of like writhing mollusk who wants to sell communism so he can drive supercars. <laughs> yeah. Balfour is, uh, is uh, an anti-Semite, and one of the major reasons as to why this was pushed originally is to get Jewish people out of Europe. It's also not... Um, it, it's, it's worse than that. He, um, the reason that the British promised the land to Palestinians, or to Arabs, that made sense because they were fighting the Ottomans. They were going to take, take over the, the German... Austro-Hungary Empire at their weakest point, which was the Ottomans. So they fought, and that was, their, that was the deal. The reason that they also supported the Jewish claim and basically made two contradictory promises, played both sides basically, they thought that Jewish people were just a lot more powerful than they actually were.
they believe that Jewish, like David Lloyd George and Balfour especially, believed that uh, Jewish international finance would like help them <laughs> win the war against Germany if they helped them get the state of Israel. So it's funny that like one of these deals was an exchange for something that actually quite helped them, like the Arabs fighting the Ottomans. But the, the reason that they, had, that they helped the Jews was because they were anti-Semitic, like, because they believed that the Jews were just a lot more powerful than they actually were, which is so, it's so funny. But also, like, the original Zionists did also work very hard to get approval, but yeah. So yeah, the Jews basically scammed the British, like, without even realizing it, without... <laughs> I guess the British scammed themselves, I don't know. Are the promises of the Balfour Declaration contradictory? No, the promises that the British made in World War I were contradictory, because they promised the land to Arabs and to Jews. That, those were the two promises that came, into, came at odds with each other. Not the declaration itself. Why right. didn't you include the Sykes-Picot agreement? Because a video about fucking Gaza. I don't know. It's about Gaza. If I was going to do a, if I was going to talk about Sykes-Picot, I would do a video on uh, the Nakba. I would do a, 40, a 1948 uh, Nakba fucking video, Arab-Israeli war. And I would talk about all the shit about the different deals, Sykes-Picot, World War I, the, the fucking uh, Jewish land purchases and the evictions. I would talk about all that in that kind of video, yeah. Um, there was ethnic displacement of the uh, Crimean Tatars from the area. Yeah, those guys. Um, and uh, there was a Russian, uh, there was a Russification uh, both in Crimea and in a lot of territories in even eastern Ukraine. So, this is, you know, this is a, a consistent principle of a dominating power that ends up uh, changing the, the demography of the, of the region, oftentimes uh, through violence, through violent means. Loader box. You, you cannot compare that to the population transfer between bastard. Greece and Turkey, in my opinion, um, because while that was also... Uh, done through very violent uh, means, I would say, it was still different than a colonial power coming in and and uh, ruthlessly displacing the native population, uprooting. So why does he think the Crimean annexation was right? You feeling bad about the Crimean annexation does not change the reality of the Crimean annexation being a completely justifiable f act by the Russian government, okay? So that's it. I really don't, yeah, I don't understand. Because it sounds like, if I could steal man, what he's saying is that what was done in the past is done, and the population is majority Russian, and they want to be part of Russia. And trying to unwind that thread of history is so much more violent and um, anti-humanist than just letting it go through Russia. That's probably what he would say. Um, problem is, is, that would also justify a lot of annexations in the West Bank. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, yeah, fuck. Anyway, the neighboring Arab countries declare war on the new state of Israel. And they lose. The result of this war is that Israel consolidated even more territory than what they were offered by the UN, turning Gaza into a disconnected enclave. And on top of this, three quarters of a million Palestinians were displaced from their homes in what is now the land of Israel. We know today that the majority of these people fled because they were either... Okay, on well that... I mean, I don't agree with that. I think that that's... Uh, oh? That's definitely... Yeah, I mean, I, I think that... Not even me that would disagree with that. I think plenty of Israeli Jewish uh, historians would disagree with that. Even his own, on his own admission, like the, the scholar that he used, Benny Morris, and I think like his earlier work would also disagree with that as well. Disagree with what? I think. People in chat are saying insane genocide denial. <laughs> denial is it? What? Because I'm saying it's now Israel? Um. Interesting. Yeah, even even uh, even Benny Morris has acknowledged that the Nakba happened. Um, oh, they think I'm denying the Nakba. Wait, why? I'm about to. I'm at like mid sentence describing it. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know. I, I feel like it's a. I mean, this this directly forced out by the IDF, or because they had okay. heard about war crimes yeah. and massacres being committed by Israeli soldiers in other villages. Many of these people were forced into Gaza, where the population almost tripled to around two hundred thousand. So. I mean, that part is, is true, not wrong. Yeah. That is how the Nakba happened. Obviously, they didn't just hear about the gross war crimes. They also committed gross war crimes. Um, the Yassin and Tantur are two that have, uh, that, that, you know, firsthand, those who were firsthand involved have uh, uncovered details of. Yeah, this is like the react strain thing, because I, like, I, he cut me mid-sentence when I said they were forced out or they heard about war crimes and committed elsewhere. So, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think he's going to call me a Nakba denier for that. His chat might. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
I think that uh, 700,000 people being ethnically displaced with a standing army, um, uh, committing acts of insane terror, like shit that they say Hamas did, some of which Hamas uh, may have even done in comparison to like uh, back then, shit that they certainly did, like 100% verifiably did. The one about Deir Yassin is the one that stays with me, especially because the, the intelligence person that, because uh, there are Jewish villages at this point and then there are Arab villages, okay? Some Arab villages at least have like some semblance of a standing militia, but they're obviously not as powerful, uh, nor do they have the same level of, uh, nor do they have the, the, the same level of firepower that the, that the uh, British trained Israeli forces have. I think that... Uh, I like this guy. He wants to not piss off a certain audience. Uh, it's like... It's kind of like a gripers talk, anyway. What's it going to say about Dare You See? That power imbalance should be talked about. Ultimately, what ends up happening is, is uh, 6,000 deaths on the uh, Israeli side, I guess the Jewish side, the Zionist side, whatever you want to call it at that point, uh, with 15,000 uh, Palestinians dying. So the disproportionate, the disproportionate nature of casualties uh, began this. in the inception I'm of the I'm not laughing Israeli at the state. massacre, I'm laughing at the chat. Uh, yes, Zionists also had uh, illegal arms that they were able to bring in uh, through illicit means. They had arms they had gotten. They had uh, training from the British uh, militias. They had training from the British police force at this point. Some of them were literally World War II veterans. I feel like mm -hmm. talking about it and, and mentioning the, the Hebron, uh, the, the massacre of, of 60 Jewish people while glancing over the 700,000 Palestinians that, that fled their homes specifically because of the atrocities, the documented atrocities that were committed in an organized attempt, by the way. Like, there was, uh, this was an, a well- it was a well-oiled machine at this point, and it was perfectly organized. It was a standing military. I and mean, the reason I talk about Hebron was because those massacres led to Gaza, which the video is about being evacuated of Jews. That's kind of why I talk about that one. But I mean, I mentioned here as well, like massacres and war crimes and shit like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe could have just described one of them to make that better. I don't know. Going into fucking towns and just ruthlessly like As soon as I start elaborating on one part of the Nakba, yet, it just opens up this whole thing. You have to talk about all of it because it's just like it's, there's so much that happened. Uh, anyway populations and then allowing the uh the fear of that to continue on to other palestinian populations so that whenever they went to other palestinian towns palestinian cities then uh these these uh, people knowing full well about what happened in tantoro der yasin would run away and of course still killing people in those towns as well some of the uh some of the psyops that they engaged in for example were uh you know they had armored personnel carriers um they had loudspeakers I don't get mm -hmm. how did he ignore it. Lorna knows about the plans. You go to Nakba, Deir Yassin, he says, and we'll say what you're saying. Well, I mean, he moved on. He went from, he called, he called the Nakba period the Israeli-Arab War, which I feel like is um, already like, I don't it's know. a neutral I, term. Yeah, I that's feel what like that's historians a, call it. Yeah. There's definitely a little bit of energy in the other direction there as far as like both the uh, asymmetry of violence and also um, who the victims were ultimately. So if violence. you've ever heard people talk about how densely populated this area is, you're maybe starting to see why. After the 48 war, Gaza came under the military occupation of Egypt. By this point, the majority of Gazans were refugees, and that would remain the case up until this day. The Strip suffered from poverty, poor living conditions, high unemployment, and with no statehood, most of them didn't really have anywhere else to go. They weren't even allowed to enter Egypt until 1954. For many of them, the bitterness of living as refugees, knowing full well that the ruins of their old homes were just a short walk away in what was now a flourishing new state, was a bit too much to live with. Don't you think he also makes it seem like the Arabs were the aggressors by admitting all the ethnic displacement that was previously committed by the British? It does feel like that a little bit. Maybe I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm being very charitable to his car, uh, coverage, but it does hey. feel like he's, um, it does redeploy the same narrative that I've heard time and time again, that, that like, uh, the Arabs are the aggressors in this circumstance without really covering what their perspective on the matter would be. He covers it. I think I did say that, um, I did say that the Arabs rejected that offer because they were two thirds of the population and only getting less than 50% of the land. But, um, yeah. In the aftermath and why it's like, it, you know, this ethnic displacement was obviously going to be scarring, but there's definitely a buildup to that moment that, that their fears were realized, yes, but also they had valid reason to fear. Not because they were like scared of Jewish people or whatever due to anti-Semitism, especially considering that Jewish people at the time, especially in Palestine, is not like a subgroup that is being... Uh, pogromed at all, especially under uh, the Ottoman Empire, where there was significantly less brutality towards Jewish people than uh, their European counterparts. But also, um, he is a, I mean, I think he's very, very well read on this matter. So I, I do feel uh, a little surprised in the way that he brought it, uh, a little surprised in the way that he brought it up. Because, like I said, I it's think- also, It's also a bit because, like, let's say I 
like I don't really know how conscious I was making that decision, like how much that was a conscious decision. I think I just kind of um the problem is is that like everyone there are there are so many left leaning videos talking about the Nakba. There are so many of them uh that focus very hard on that bit. From doing a history of Gaza, I feel like my whole approach has generally been like I want to add things that not every other YouTuber has done. And if you're on the the problem with YouTube and because of the fucking partisanship, uh, the Hebron massacre and the fact that Jews were kicked out of Hebron and that Gaza used to have a Jewish population and it stopped having that after the riots uh, in 29, left-wingers don't cover that. Um, so I just thought I might as well like, yeah, I don't really like just preaching to the choir so much. I don't think it takes away any validity from the Palestinian uh, struggle and from the fact that they suffered obviously a lot more in 48 than Jews did in 29. I don't think I, yeah. Because I'm already talking about the refugee population in Gaza going up by in like hundreds of thousands, so like tripling a re like a the population of an entire place just with refugees. So, mm. <sighs> but yeah, like I've never been shy about that. Yeah, that the ones who were wronged in the circumstance were absolutely uh, the the Arabs, and one they were right to feel they were right to feel threatened because this wasn't like Jewish people immigrating into. Uh, this this area peacefully, but do you contend and, the Nakba? And, and uh, you know, this yeah. was like a collaborative effort or whatever. Although there were certainly Jewish people that were immigrating peacefully, and were interested in uh, integration, interested in like collaboration for the broader Arab population there, the broader Palestinian population there, some of which were Jewish. It seemed as though this was a colonial power, a new master, if you will, that was uh, engaging in in um, in displacement by changing the demographics of the population on the ground. A coordinated Western effort, yes, which is true. I mean, that is what happened. That was exactly what it was. So, you know, their understanding of the situation, especially considering um, the assurances that they were supposedly, that they supposedly got from the British, um, I think it makes it way more reasonable for them to be, um, way more reasonable for them to, to want to defend. They see this as like, not... Many people don't believe in the not, but you should have emphasized that more. Yeah, but I want to do it for a separate video. That's why I keep saying that if I, I, I even said in, um, I even said in this, you can talk about this for ages, but for the purpose of this video, I'll keep it short. <laughs> yeah. Um, because that's not enough time to convince someone who doesn't agree with me that the Nakba was like an ethic cleansing. And it's too much time telling people who already know what happened then, who already agree with me, what well, they already know. Yeah, I don't know. Like I did say, I said, the majority of them fled because they were fucking kicked out or because they knew about war crimes that had been committed in other villages. So war crimes, removals, and knowing about the previous two. That's, that's the whole argument for why it's an ethnic cleansing. So, uh, yeah. Necessarily, uh, people peacefully and they weren't allowed back, area, which I, instead I, as a, as a And that they weren't allowed back, which I also mentioned. So, yeah. Violent act uh, from a colonial power that rules them, because it was. A small minority of Gazans resorted to violence and started launching low-level attacks into Israel. These nationalist militants, who often made no- Were they also told to leave by uh, Arab leaders? Yeah, uh, so very, like, less than... Less than 20 villages of people left because they were told to by Arab leaders. The real number is closer to six, I think. <laughs> yeah, out of, like, three, four, five hundred. So, hmm. No distinction between civilian and military targets would become known as the Fedayeen, or in English, self-sacrificers. The IDF would then respond with raids on Gazan refugee camps, one of which resulted in 50 civilian deaths. In the mid-50s, there was even a plan organized by Egypt and the UN to transfer the refugees from Gaza into the Sinai Desert. The Palestinians, who saw this as a way of killing off their right of return, protested en masse against the plan, resulting in violent clashes with the Egyptian military. The protests were so unmovable that the resettlement scheme was abandoned in 1955. Then, in 1956, during the Suez Canal crisis, the IDF was present in Gaza for around four months, with the objective of rooting out Fedayeen fighters. These operations were incredibly rough. It seems to be- You see a- Uh, a- a- wait, what the fuck? Oh, I muted it on, for, on accident. Do you see a- a one-to-one -one comparison here? Time and time again. It's just odd. Time and time again. There's an understandable resistance to- I'm hey. about to say why the, the Israeli response to the Fedayeen in Gaza was fucking insane. I'm about to mention two massacres, but I guess we're, uh, he's going to go off now. Oh no. Bro, react content. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, 
tea with the $5. Why does Hassan pretend the Ottoman Empire was so great to its religious minorities? They literally had blood tax for a few hundred years. Uh, does he pretend that? I don't know. I haven't heard him say that. It's a strange point that people make. But yeah. A, a um, outside nation. That, it wasn't as bad like, as Europe. Uh, the Egyptians offered them like some level of authority, some, some level of autonomy, some level of authority uh, to the Palestinians inside of Gaza. But even then, all of these, uh, all of these circumstances lead to no, in, like Palestinian interests never being represented. Their understandable interests never being represented. Their morally people, righteous <laughs> interests never being represented. Oh no. Okay. Incredibly At this point, rough, they've become rough permanent refugees. Passive there. Oof. Sorry, it was genocide. They're still close enough to their uh, ancestral homelands, but they're still permanent refugees nonetheless. And the, the disposition of any kind of uh, violent retaliation... 2K Andy. Hey, like the stream, valid, like the stream. Woo. Any kind of violent retaliation that was perfectly valid was always met with a tremendous amount of state violence. State uh, violence both... Fede, by it's, it's, you wouldn't say that every Fedayin... What did he say there? Sorry. And the, the disposition of any kind of uh, violent retaliation, which was perfectly valid. Again, I wouldn't say the Fedayeen attacks were perfectly valid, because again, they targeted civilians. They didn't give a fuck about killing civilians. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not targeted, but they didn't distinguish. Um, yeah. Any kind of violent retaliation that was perfectly valid was always met with a tremendous amount of state violence. State violence both by the IDF and state violence by, for example, uh, uh, the, the Jordanian Authority. The scheme was abandoned and the in Egyptian 1955. Authority. Then, in 1956, during the Suez Canal crisis, the IDF was present in Gaza for around four months with the objective of rooting out Fedayeen fighters. These operations were incredibly rough. It seems to be the case that dozens of Fedayeen were summarily executed without trial even after the fighting had stopped. In the towns of Rafa and Khan Yunis, the IDF operations devolved into massacres and over 375 people were killed. The details surrounding these events are murky, although a UN report from the time didn't exactly paint the Israeli forces in the best light. For example, the killings in the Rafa refugee camp happened after the IDF had called the men up for a screening procedure. It seemed like the call wasn't clearly delivered across the whole camp, and the men were not given enough time to respond to the call. In the confusion, a large number of them ran toward the screening point for fear of being reprimanded for being late. In response, some Israeli soldiers panicked and opened fire on the crowd, killing 111 people. Okay. I mean, this is, I'm sorry, but this is a tremendous amount of charitability offered to the IDF every single step of the way. That's not charitable. It's bad if you panic because you fucked a screening procedure and killed people. I don't know. That's, a, yeah. That's just like, when you get primed, like, that's not a good thing. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> Fuck me. If I wanted to excuse the IDF, I would just point to Khan Yunus because it's less clear whether or not that was a battle or a massacre. But like, even then, I think it was more likely a massacre. I don't know. It's just, if I'm just, you would have to assume that that's charitable. Like, that it's charitable to say that they, I'm just quoting the UN report, like. I thought I was doing the extra effort by reading that whole report as well to show exactly how the killing happened. Not so that there's no like, oh, there were fighters. No, it was because there was a screening procedure. They called up uh, the men of a refugee camp of about 30,000 people. Didn't give them enough time to reach the point. They ran up to the point because they were afraid of being late. And then some fucking dipshit like started firing at them because he was like badly trained or whatever. And then just led into a fucking massacre. So yeah, that's, that's a big L for Israel, actually. That's not like a... That's a huge Israeli L. They're not simply, I mean, if you believe that, Nazi then yeah, type you also shit. believe personally that <laughs> Israel is currently wiping out Hamas. Like, Nazi it's not type cleansing. shit. They're simply engaging in a military operation in the Gaza Strip, just like they have time and time again. And oopsie, uh, there is no deliberate, uh, like, there's no deliberate. Attack. That's why your charitability is wasted on Lonerbo. That's why. I just described what happened. It's Lower not my box. fault that you think you that's an excuse. <laughs> it's not my fault that you think it makes the IDF look better to know that they opened fire in a crowd of defenseless fucking unarmed people because they panicked. Why do you think that's giving them an out? Is that acceptable to these people? To this fucking horde? <laughs> I don't, that's not acceptable to me. I'm more anti-Israel than this entire fucking chat. I don't think Israel should have gotten away with that. I think that's a fucking, that's a crime. That's a fucking <laughs> horrific crime. Attempt to mow the lawn. And it's always just simply uh, in a moment of panic, 111 people just like, I hit the genocide button. No, I don't agree with this. Because I do ascribe a, a motivation to all of the actions that um, IDF. Taco and, uh, this person IDF, used like, to be one of my viewers. Days. 
Remember that name. Zionist brigades have engaged in. And I do think that not mentioning the violence within the Nakba and simply glancing over it is also not correct because that violence set the tone for the expulsion. Because <sighs> like if you're talking about uh, in Hebron, um, 60 uh, Jewish people being slaughtered in a, in a pogrom or something similar to a pogrom in a riot, many of them women and children, you have to bring up, in my opinion, these incredibly formative events in Deir Yassi and Tantura and many others that we don't even fucking know about because some of this shit is not declassified. Um, that that led to the violent expulsion of seven. I mentioned the massacres. Uh, I mentioned the massacres. I mentioned the massacres. I, uh, I mentioned the massacres. That was the Palestinians. Like they didn't just leave. Whatever. Like he doesn't That's do the fine. Ben Shapiro thing. Ben Shapiro personally lies and says there was an Arab war. All the Arabs were like fuck the fuck the Jews, and uh, we wanted to kill all the Jews. And then all of these Palestinians foolishly thought that they would escape and the Arabs would save them, and then they'd be able to come back to their homes. Like it's ridiculous. The Arabs abandoned their home. It's like the reverse. Do you condemn the IDF? Do you condemn the IDF? Oh, you said that they <laughs> implemented a dog shit screening procedure that caused the people to run up to the screening points, and then one of your soldiers fucking soyed out and started firing on them like a fucking asshole, like a fucking criminal. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you didn't clarify whether or not that was a good thing or not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. Kill me, bro. Notably, Israeli officials at the time didn't acknowledge any wrongdoing, uh, but they didn't deny it either. Uh, in 1967, hey. after the Six-Day War, Israel took control bro, of- I think that's a pretty clear fucking indictment. I'm sorry. That's a very clear indictment. There's no way that you- I guess because the only way you could assume that is if you're already presuming that I've got like a sympathetic fucking to the- that I've got like a more- that I'm more inclined to excuse IDF crimes. The only way you could draw that conclusion from those words is if you assume that, because I'm just reading a UN report, just showing what happened. That's, that's the way of proving that what happened was wrong. Because I'd imagine if I spoke about the, um, if I spoke about the, the Rafa massacre, I would imagine a pro-Israel person would say, uh, why were all the deaths men? <laughs> why was it all men who died? Well, then I would say, well, because they ordered the men up for a screening procedure. Their screening procedure was fucked. They didn't give them enough time. There were too many people. Uh, it, they ran towards the screening point and then some IDF dipshit fired on them and then like a, a few IDF people fired on them and massacred them. So that was the, yeah, it was the IDF's fault. Yeah. It's not because they were making them say, saying that they were all men would be implying that they were a threat. They were not a threat. They were unarmed, defenseless fucking people who didn't want to be late for the screening procedure because they would get reprimanded or suspected. And this was after they'd summarily- I said that they summarily Lord executed people without trial. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, anyway, okay. I think by mentioning the screening procedure being inadequate, I, I'm quite clearly blaming the idea for those killings. 100%. Not even like 99, but 100% the IDF's fault for those killings. Fuck them. Loner box life. As a Palestinian, you show more integrity than Hassan. Uh, we claim you, you Lebni. <laughs> that's what I should do. I should get you, Ahura, and like the other fucking four or five Palestinians who watch this stream. I should get you all to react to this with me and hold you up like my human shields. <laughs> my, my oppressed human shields. Oh, God. That would be very debate pedophile behavior. The debate pedophiles are out in droves. Holy moly. Over the Gaza Strip, as well as the Sinai Peninsula, the West Bank, which had been previously controlled by Jordan, and the Golan Heights, which had previously been part of Syria. So that's a lot. And now Israel had to decide what to do with these territories. Some of them, for, See, example, for example, I'm not really coming into Israel's aid here either by saying that that war was pretty strongly provoked by Egypt. Like Nasser closed the Straits of Tehran acknowledged that closing the Straits of Tehran was an Israeli uh, red line when it came to war, made a bunch of defense pacts, rhetorically was just very much, we're gonna, light, we're gonna fucking stain the, the Israeli sands with blood, like, eh. But again, I didn't, I just said the Six Day War happened and then Gaza came under Israeli occupation. So I'm not exact, and people got, people got mad at me for saying that. People got mad at me for saying that uh, the Six Day War was like, for not saying that it was provoked by fucking Egypt, right? East Jerusalem and the Golan Heights were annexed, but the future of Gaza was unclear. In the early days after the war, to, I'm just trying to focus on Gaza. I'm just trying to focus on just like what life has been like in Gaza. What's it like being a Gazan kicking around for the last hundred years? I'm just trying to give you the facts. 
in a fax-free zone. I'm sorry. All right. Hassan's being fine, though. I'm not, like, too bothered by what he's saying. Mm. Hezbollah is, is Shia. Iran is Shia. Their current regional ally that is, is rising to the occasion is the Shia Houthi government that is sending missiles, which I did not even know, from fucking space. <laughs> which is crazy to think about, especially when are they you, sending you them from the space? They were under blockade not that long ago. I didn't know that. Are they sending these missiles from space? The Houthis? The Houthis went to space. I didn't know that. I thought they were just sending shit. Oh, I guess because you would have to go into the there's long range, right? No, they're not. Is it just like into the fucking uh, stratosphere and then back down? Space J dams. The IDF intercepted one in space, bro. Stop. Uh, it's not that important. <laughs> so that's right. I know ICBMs Yemen do that, and the missiles that they're spending. My, my they're assumption send is that the Houthis do not have ICBMs. That's my uh, very limited military expertise is telling me that the, <laughs> that the Houthis don't have ICBMs. Do they? Stop. Um, Sabra and Shatila not even getting a mention. That was a massive spur on many Palestinian events that followed. Also true as well. So gross and so gross. Sabra and Shatila was in Lebanon. This is a video about Gaza. You have, you Hassan Chatter. Fuck. <laughs> I know why they're saying that. I've spoken about Sabra and Shatila in another video, but, um, and I, uh, don't recall defending it in that video either. Or indeed at any time. As far as I know, even the, the Christians in Lebanon typically don't defend Sabra Shatila. Um, I've heard that some of them will say that the IDF actually did it. <laughs> there probably are some people who think that like the Palestinians deserved it because of uh, Jemail and because of... Um, what was the one that came before it? Damour. But then Damour happened after Carantina, so it's like, I don't know. There were a lot of massacres in the Lebanese Civil War, but I think Sabra Shatila was definitely the more egregious one. Gruesome that, like, uh, punishments were even, well, light punishments were even doled out internally for the massacre. These are, all, these are all incredibly violent acts that Palestinians are experiencing. It's different country doesn't matter. These are still Palestinians. Palestinian refugee camp in Lebanon is still housing Palestinians. You think they don't fucking hear about what's going on? You don't, you don't think that they hear that the IDF has allowed psychopathic Christian fascist militias to literally go into a Palestinian refugee camp to, uh, you know, kill Hamas members in an identical uh, fashion where the only, the only thing that they're doing at that point is literally blocking off all the exits, allowing them to slaughter babies and, and women. Literally, if you've ever heard someone uh, talk about a pregnant woman having their child cut out of their body, mm -hmm. okay, while the child is still alive, that's from Sabra and Shatila. Yep. That's where that story comes from. That's, that's where that happened. It's like a um, fucking kid hiding underneath the corpses of their dead parents. Yeah. Those Christians were pretty fucking insane. They send in, they send in the, the psycho fucking, uh, the... No, his father is not a phalangist. Shut the fuck up. You're <laughs> just saying that because he's a Christian Lebanese. I don't think he's, his father is a uh, phalangist. Shut up. <laughs> yes. Ridiculous. Hassan versus left-wing racism. Let's go. He knows. <laughs> They're going to spam him with a tweet now. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> okay, here we go. No, Hassan. Anyway, <laughs> you haven't seen this. Obviously, if you a real look at the tweet. situation, he said terrorist manifesto as being disgusted. He is a fucking racist scum. <laughs> he is. A... I mean. Hmm. This person is so unbelievably white. This person gets fucking sunburn in the middle of the night. 
in Norway in the winter. Indoors. <laughs> How do you... <laughs> Why does this person even get out of bed in the morning? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> like... Jesus. Now, Hamas did not win over the Palestinian- Thank you. Uh, there you go. Suck my dick, chatter. ...public right away. In 1989, they were supported by less than 3% of the people living in Gaza. Damn. Though they would slowly gain- Here We're in go. sync. In 1989, percent of Palestinians in Gaza, where Hamas would prove strongest, supported the organization. In the days before the Oslo Accords were signed in 1993, only 16.6% .6 of Palestinians in Gaza identified with Hamas politically, and only 10% of the West Bank. This figure was much smaller when it came to active supporters. The journalist Zaki Chahab claimed that Hamas military wing only- Me and Hassan, we're like that. We're, we're like that. He had 20 machine guns when it began its campaign of terrorism as the Intifada wound down. For He's much of the 1990s, the military wing never reached 100 total- I'm sorry. Do you know how, like, the biggest- do you know the biggest problem some of these cunts have with me? This chat, sorry. Is that um, it's only a minority in this chat as well. Some of them are, seem to be quite nice. Um, it's like... The big thing, uh, the, the first big fucking deal these guys had with me was that I defended aristocracy, who's apparently a Zionist fucking scum apartheid. But if I'm also a Zionist pro-apartheid genocide denier whatever, and Hassan's defending me, doesn't that make him, it shouldn't in the eyes of his community, that make him that kind of, as much of a problem as well? Why isn't Hassan a apartheid defending an apartheid defender who defends an apartheid defender? <laughs> why, why is the chain not ending? Why is he not getting fucking fired on in the defense section? Why isn't Bad Empanada uh, fucking on a endless schizoid retarded crusade against Hassan. Drooling over his fucking iPhone screen on Twitter at three in, three in the morning. Telling lies about him and shit. Why aren't he doing that to Hassan? Because Hassan's defending me. He's defending me like twice now. That's a fucking nail in the coffin, apparently. Um, I don't know. I don't understand, are you and Hassan friends or not? Um, we only started talking like a few, like a week ago in DMs. Um, do you feel defended? Uh, actually, yeah. Um, because I don't mind him getting fucking mad about the disagreements or the, I don't mind him doing that, even if I don't think they're, yeah, if I don't agree with all the critiques. I don't mind that part. That part's fine. The thing I don't like is when, People fucking pigeonhole each other into positions they don't have. Into like, like the branding. I don't like the, you're a Zionist, you're a fucking genocide denier. I don't like any of that shit because once that, once that badge is on you, everything you say is turned into like evidence of that, even if it's like completely floppy b bullshit, right? Um, that's why, as much as I was very mean to Hassan about his Ukraine takes, I never called him a Russia defender. I don't think that's what he is. I even stopped short of calling him a tanky. Even though I think his opinions on China are very tanky um, adjacent. Um, I don't think that's like a good, I don't think that really sums him up in the same way that it would sum up someone like Second Thought. Uh, so, I don't know. So yeah, I do feel fairly defended here. Um, campus, I think that probably fits him, yeah. I think he's a bit of a campist. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh yeah, the person asking me to explain this. <laughs> Loner Box was the reason I got into misinformation in 2016. He broke down everything in a way that finally helped me understand being a Weasley little liar, dude. <laughs> The streamer is not your friend. He's not a streamer. He's a pers- <laughs> He fell right into it. <laughs> He's a persuader, a leader, and a mentor. <laughs> Loyal to the EU. Okay. <laughs> Blood and fire, we will expel Rabin. When Netanyahu was warned about threats being made on Rabin's life and asked to moderate the tone of the protests, 
he declined. Yeah, he Later did. that year, Rabin was assassinated by an Israeli ultranationalist after holding a rally in support of the peace process. Was Netanyahu engaging in stochastic terrorism? Discuss below. Hamas, on the other hand, fought against the peace process with actual terrorism. In the early 90s, they decided to borrow a tactic. Okay, see, uh, no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. I think Israel is also engaging in an act of terror by continuing the occupation at this moment. No. No, I, I, I don't agree. Actual terrorism? If what Hamas is doing at this point is actual terrorism, which I guess he's like going to start talking about the second intifada, which is like... I, I was comparing it to Netanyahu's stochastic terror. Uh, okay, I, just, I don't really know if this is necessarily... Uh... This is a very... I think words have meaning, yeah. I don't know. I think that's a bit picky. You know, terrorism in the way that we understand it from a Western lens, you know, suicide bombings on civilian uh, areas, suicide bombings happening on, on uh, you know, school buses and shit, that, that's ridiculous. If that's actual terrorism, then what Israel is doing is infinitely worse. No. Um, I think that Israel at this point is an apartheid state. It certainly is violent in its maintenance of said apartheid state. This reaction to that is coming at the heels of, of a, a, a potential peace process being dangled in front of the Palestinians, but they're not stupid. They see it. They see that this is bullshit. Like the, the two-state solution is just simply, uh, uh, the two-state solution is simply only causing more settlements to, to be built. tactic used by Hezbollah against the Israelis in Lebanon, known as suicide bombing. Their first attempt in 1993 was botched. The bomb had a flawed design which caused the blast to go up instead of out, so the only people who died were the bomber and one innocent Palestinian worker. Rip. But they would succeed with plenty more in the future, and they were soon killing between 30 and 70 people a year within Israel's borders. They publicly took credit for the bombings, describing them as revenge for decades of Palestinian deaths at the hands of Israelis, but but, but that's true. Like, is that not true? I don't, it doesn't, you don't know where I'm going with the butt. <laughs> they have no idea where I'm going with the butt. Like, okay. People tone placing me over the rip thing. I'm sorry, a botched suicide bombing attempt where the bomb goes up instead of sideways 30 or 40 years later is kind of funny. I'm sorry. Like, obviously the person, the worker did not deserve to die. Poor fucking, poor guy. But shit, like... <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, what, what do you think? True. For the most part, it didn't sell. In 1996, over 70%... This part is also true. I'm glad that he's talking about this. Okay. <laughs> if Palestinians oppose the bombings and support... I love the, the ha halfway through a sentence interruptions. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. ...for Hamas fell to 6%. The efforts of Hamas didn't immediately push people away from the peace process, but it did slow things down. And it also succeeded in dis... No, 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 no. I mean, he, he gives like... I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Um, the suicide bombings were a big reason for Netanyahu coming, getting elected in 96, no? And he won by a pretty... Hang on. What was the, uh, the election in 96? This was suicide bombing that did this, right? This was like, they were introduced to this new fucking terror and they, they were like, let's go right wing. Let's go fucking mental. And then, yeah, look at this margin, like 30,000 votes. Hmm. No, that is true. I'm sorry. Yeah. Some information. Okay. Give some information that's all true. Like the, the, the violent retaliation uh, to Israel in this situation in the hands of Hamas is still unpopular. Mm -hmm. because they're still in the eyes of Palestinians, like regardless of how shitty the fucking deal is, uh, there's still a potential. And they also fucked the work permit scheme as well. So it meant that Gazans were completely disconnected from uh, Israel. For peacemaking, potential for deal, uh, for deal making. Um, and every single time that this happened, in every single circumstance, there is a tremendous amount of violence that is he mixes lies with a bit of truth. <laughs> what lies, dipshit? All really, right, state right. is subjecting Palestinians to that just completely gets lost here. If you if you only talk about what Hamas is doing at this point, 
you're you're skipping a shit ton of of violence that Palestinians who are uh, engaging in an act of civil disobedience are getting subjected to. The first intifada was fucking ruthless, and so was the second intifada. I don't agree with this. The first intifada, the first intifada was brutal to the Palestinian population, even even without like uh, the the random indiscriminate acts of murder, which also happened, like. Tens of thousands of- Wrong by the 96 election, it was because of the attack on Lebanon. What was the attack on Lebanon in 96? Oh. Let's have a look. The ongoing Lebanon conflict. Oh, graves of- was it this? People blamed the right for Rabin's assassination. Due to the series of suicide bombings carried out in Israel and due to the failed military operation Grapes of Wrath conducted in Lebanon that caused many casualties among Lebanese civilians, a significant change occurred in their position of Israeli voters, which resulted in 50.5% voting for Netanyahu on the election day. <laughs> the wiki's saying both, so <laughs> I didn't actually know uh, that this was part of the Netanyahu coming in, though, Grapes of Wrath. They attended to end uh, rocket attacks. Interesting. Read the next sentence. A significant number of Israeli Arabs boycotted the elections amidst rising Lebanese cat. Oh. Oh, they could have got per. Oh. Damn. In addition, the extensive campaign conducted by Netanyahu versus the failed campaign of Perez. As well as the support Netanyahu got at last moment from Chabad movement were all in Netanyahu's favor. Well, you always learn something new, eh? The people were severely, gravely wounded. And then also, there's another point here that is very important. I mean, I don't know what part he's talking about between 1993 and 2005, but the... the the uh the mosque shooting uh, of of uh, Baruch Goldstein going into going to the mosque and, and shooting twenty nine uh, people praying throwing a fucking grenade and like wounding I think I forget how many people he he wounded but like the like there are there's a shit ton of incredibly gross incredibly violent actions that take place mm -hmm. in this uh in this time frame I mean this is. There's this guy has said this like four times right now. Your completely admirable charitability is wasted on <laughs> fuck off. I don't think it, it. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to look at this as though it's like, oh well, some guys were like, I hate peace. I'm gonna fucking blow up a, I'm going to blow up a a, a school bus or some shit. Like it's not. That's not true. If you watch this, you would would you assume Israel literally did anything? Yeah, I mean, my takeaway if I didn't know. If I didn't know exactly what was going on, uh, if I if I wasn't aware of the uh, the history, I would literally leave this thinking. Well, Israel was pretty fair to the Palestinians. It does seem like, you know, maybe they were like lying a little bit in the negotiations process. At least so far, maybe he'll change up after. But, um, yeah, I don't th like from from the massacres in the fifties. All I guess because I said um, they panicked and that was a big problem apparently. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Would you have got that impression? I don't think so. The, the Gaza refugee population? The poverty, the unemployment? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. Two good vids on you the intifada. You heard the intifada. term intifada. The first intifada when nonviolent protests He's there again. Explained. <laughs> don't stop. Good Morty. Holy shit. <laughs> I like that the first intifada, not, look, the first intifada, fine. Second intifada, age restricted. <laughs> because that is what happened. That is literally what happened. They went from they went from like strikes and, and stone throwing to age restricted shit. Yeah, killed twenty nine and injured one hundred twenty five in the mosque attack. And yes, Israel's retaliation to the first intifada was insane. Okay. I, I yeah I don't I don't agree with uh, I think that there's a lot more on this video. I think it's like historically accurate. I wouldn't say it's historically inaccurate, hey. but I think it's good. I think it's it's a good video to give you like some of the basics, but it certainly is a good video to give you the basics if uh, if you know the history uh, beyond just like what you're hearing uh, in this video because I I do think that the framing of this makes it seem as though like Israel is kind of bad at times, but nowhere near as ruthless as they actually were.
connecting the Gazan population from the state of Israel. In the mid 80s, nearly half of the people in Gaza had permits to. What? Oh, why'd you ban that guy? Oh, there he is again. Your completely admirable chargeability is wasted really on loaner. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna DM this person. I just feel like not enough people know, you know? Where, how do I, how do I even? Okay, there we go. Now they know. Now, now they know that we know. <laughs> and by this point, in the wake of the Second Intifada, the peace process between Israel and the PLO was as good as dead, and Hamas became increasingly prominent. When Israel pulled out of southern Lebanon, it was widely believed even in the Second Intifada, it wasn't that fucking... ...if that they were pushed out by Hezbollah, and Palestinians became increasingly convinced that violence would have a better chance of... Oh, now I'm getting fucking Twitch DMs, okay. <laughs> Does Lonerbox have family in the IDF like I'm really important? I don't, sometimes I'm just speechless, you know? Sometimes I actually don't really have anything witty to say. Uh, we just, we, we just be. Of winning their freedom. Wait, what happened? There's an upper limit. Okay. Okay. That <laughs> He's is still actually, doing it. unironically, exactly what they Whoops, saw. Not, He's still doing it. That is what happened. Yes. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm making the point. Yeah. In the eyes of the Palestinians, they were like, we had two decades of fucking, two decades of fuck you from uh, peace negotiations with the Israelis. The Americans don't have our fucking backs, even though, you know, Arafat uh, and the Americans are chummy. <laughs> okay. And, and the only time, the only time Israel's actually uh, dialed back their uh, indiscriminate violence literally uh, it was because there was a, a successful resistance movement why the fuck? Why the fuck would, would, would Palestinians look at that and go, well, we're trying to deal with you peacefully and look what you're doing to us. Meanwhile, those motherfuckers are not and they succeeded. Why would they ever look at the situation and go, yeah. <laughs> it's not fake. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. It's, uh, this means Bad and Panada knew that Hassan was reacting to my video. And he was like, oh no, I must, oh no, I need to, I need to sabotage the loader box Hassan peace person. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was, he just had to, he had to do it. Like, I love it. That he had to just, <laughs> thanks for confirming that 99% of my criticisms are fucking insane. Oh God. Who made that fake tweet? It was Bana Panada, of course. Because he's racist. He's, he, he, because I'm Lebanese Christian, he thinks that I must be a fucking phalangist. Uh, because he's racist. He's a white racist who looks like a fucking Neanderthal who had a fucking iron, uh, who fell asleep with an iron on his face. Um, we should keep doing the peaceful thing. Him personally. Yeah, it was him personally. Because he was the first one who put that rumor out. Yeah. Freedoms. Though a majority of them still opposed Hamas's suicide attacks, the number was markedly lower than it had been 10 years earlier. In 2005. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah. 52% still say suicide attacks are unjustifiable. Come on. And at that point. I'm just. I, I feel like I'm kind of making his point that he agrees with, but he's just like he's ascribing a different moral position to it. It's kind of weird. Um.
yeah, I'm saying that the peace process failed. Lebanon, uh, that violence of Hezbollah succeeded. Of course, Palestinians were going to think that violence is going to achieve more for them than peace will, than negotiations will. I'm just describing what happened and, wh and why the thinking shifted. But uh, okay. Point. There's like nothing remaining. There's not. What, what do they oh, have? Here they he is again. It's coming. Whoop. Whoop. Oh, I mean, those numbers, if anything, those numbers Slowly literally show the majority, bastard. the majority still were against like, uh, against these, uh, these acts of violence. There was no period of time prior to 1948 that the Arab-Palestinian population had sovereignty over what we know as uh -oh. Israel today. Oh, uh, dude, Hasbro uh, talking points are, are popping off. Uh-oh. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Before 1948, there's no fucking Israel either. Suck my dick, bitch. Fuck you mean. Before 1948, you know what it was called? Isn't real, dog. That's what it was fucking called. Dumb That's fuck. True. Yeah. Palestinians had that. more of a historical reason to engage in a post-colonial nation-state building project that the British fucking promised them than than Israel did. What the fuck are you talking about? Dumb bitch. Suck my dick. What a stupid fucking take. Oh, and they didn't have a nation state. Like as though as though all of these countries uh had, hadn't been like recently formed anyway. What the fuck was happening? What was happening? Yeah, there was no India before 47 either. Like, you're so stupid. Shut up. Yes. Get him. Then, let's continue. Palestine was not a state. The entire... There was no states! Half the states were not a state! What do you mean? <laughs> Half the states were not states... I do find this argument so weird, because Palestinians don't say, we had a state, and then the Israelis invaded it. Even, even the quite extreme ones don't say that. They say that the people lived here, and then they were kicked off. You know? Yeah, it's a bit more... It's a bit more personal than just like the idea that a state got invaded. I guess that with the maps, it's like you would respond to that with the with the disappearing Palestine map, but yeah. But it's not really the the argument. It's not a very good steel, man. So like recently. Stupid. <laughs> stupid bitch. None of this still means that you can build Israel there, okay? Mm-hmm. There was people there. The entire war has been built on a simple deceptive lie. You're talking about Islamophobia, anti-Islam. There's so many of them. The fuck? He's very good at finding like a, a position where it's not really there, I've noticed with my video. <laughs> like the idea that um, what Palestinians uh, were more inclined towards violence because of the Lebanese withdrawal and the fair and the, the Israeli withdrawal of Lebanon and the failure of the peace process. Uh, just describing why they moved towards violence, but he's just like, uh, yeah, yeah, they did. What? <laughs> yeah, of course they, yeah, what? But I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I just explained box. why they did. The yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, motherfucker's like, wow, I really hate the Islamophobia. You only talk about Islamophobia. It's like, brother, do you know how much I get called Hamasabi? Like, where do you think that comes from? That comes from, wait, actually, that comes from you guys. <laughs> that comes from some of you guys. Uh-oh. Which I don't condone. I feel like Hassan did get shoehorned into the pro-Hamas wing quite quickly. <laughs> um, I could definitely think it's worth to call out his... Uh, you can call out his lack of call out of second thought. That's a bit of a sentence. And all those people. <sighs> Like, why do you think that, wait, like, how many times do I have to fucking condemn uh, Hamas's actions on October 7th? Whoa. Like, doesn't matter. At a certain point, it seems like you don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? You're going to still say I'm uh, Hamas Abi. Yeah. Motherfucker how did said feel? Palestine wasn't a state in 1948, dude. Sick. He condemned their, yeah, he condemned their, he said it in this fucking video. Yeah. Hassan doesn't like Hamas, okay, yeah. New new uh, Israel unilaterally disengaged from Gaza and the 8,000 Jewish settlers who lived there were evacuated by the IDF. The pullout was done with no negotiations or input from the Palestinian side. And this allowed Hamas to push the line that Israel had been forced out by terrorist violence. And whilst this wasn't 100% true, it was true enough for an effective PR campaign. Your complete, uh, completely admirable charitability is wasted on Lornerbox Hassan Abi. <laughs> How many are we on now? God. Loner Box is in favor of ethnic cleansing of Israel, just not the outright genocide going on now. I thought I was more in favor of the apartheid and the open-air prison of uh, uh, Israel 
northern Israel, but not in favor of the war crime against humanity genocide of the now. I thought that was my position. But, uh, okay. Israel, and were in favor of pursuing a peace agreement. Instead, it looked like Hamas's victory was really owed to a desire to end government corruption. The leaders of Fatah were true. very corrupt. Um, fun fact, their leader, Mahmoud Abbas, currently has a higher net worth than Netanyahu. Whoa. And Hamas would turn out to be very corrupt too, but they were at this point able to project an image of trustworthiness due to their religiosity and their origins as a charity. But here, there was a problem. For one, Israel, the United States, and the European Union all refused to deal with the Hamas government. Abbas, who had just been elected president a year earlier, wanted to uphold the PA's recognition of Israel, something which Hamas refused to accept. The result was that any unity government of the two parties would have been unable to negotiate with Israel or their Western partners. The two parties repeatedly failed to reach an agreement, and in 2007, they went to war. Ha okay, that's not what happened. The United States of America facilitated a coup after their failed election because they thought Fatah would be able to win, despite the fact that Fatah uh, leadership personally told the United States that that would not happen. They would lose the election. Then they were like, oopsie, okay, let's do a fucking coup. They literally tortured a bunch of Hamas people. And then guess what the fuck happened? Hamas seized control over the entirety of Gaza because of... I think what happened was that Hamas actually took a preemptive... Wasn't the Hamas, wasn't the Hamas that made the first move as a preemptive attack? in anticipation of a coup, although the coup was actually being planned. So I think they were right, but it was preemptive. Um, that's why I just said they went to war, because it's complicated, yeah. Um, that's what I thought. Oh, where the fuck is it? Is it here? According to the ISS, the June 2007 escalation was triggered by Hamas's conviction that the PA's presidential guard, loyal to Mahmoud Abbas, was being positioned to take control of Gaza. The US had helped build up the presidential guard to 3,500 men since August 2006. The U.S. committed $59 million for training in non-lethal equipment. Rise of tensions. I think Hamas launched a preemptive attack on the PA in Gaza, but I can't... On Fatah, sorry. Uh, Hamas militants stormed the post. Called for new elections. Where's the fucking preemptive part? I swear I read this on the wiki. Oh, is it this one? In April 2008, in Vanity Fair magazine, the journalist David Rose published confidential documents apparently originating from the U.S. State Department which would prove that the United States collaborated with the PNA and Israel to attempt to violently overthrow uh, of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and that Hamas preempted the coup. Yeah, this is what I thought, yeah. So Hamas preemptively attacked because there was a coup that was actually being planned by the U.S. Okay, yeah, I got you. And PNA. Okay. Yeah, I knew that. Okay. Yeah, you can summarize that as that they went to war after failing to reach agreements. That's not wrong. The so from here on, we have two separate governing bodies in Gaza and the West Bank, both more or less at war with each other and both exerting authoritarian rule over their territories. Abbas has refused to hold elections since 2006. Okay, except these guys are doing it uh, at the behest of Israel. It's also an important distinction to make. These, I think I mentioned that, don't I? These guys are doing it at the behest of Israel. These guys are doing it for their Later own on. personal uh, interest, certainly. But these guys at least have, due to, uh, due to complete control over Gaza, except for, uh, the, uh, uh, except for the fact that like, you know, they don't have any commerce and, uh, and Israel controls all matter of trade and everything that's going in and out of the Gaza Strip, uh, they at least have like, a semblance of, of civil governance that they have to engage in. They literally have to engage in some semblance of civil governance they have to it's an incredibly chaotic volatile situation if they don't actually at this point engage in some kind of civil governance then they're fucked because some other group is going to take over right they don't have any real authority but with the limited amount of authority they have over the gaza strip they they work on one creating a structure where they can violently respond to israel every time because everyone is at this point completely given up on the West Bank protecting the interests of Palestinians, or sorry, uh, Fatah protecting the interests of Palestinians. So every single time Israel decides to fucking, you know, squeeze the Palestinians further, 
Every single time Israel chooses to squeeze the Palestinians further in the West Bank, the violent retaliation comes from Gaza. This is also pushing more Palestinians in the hands of, of Hamas in general, seeing them as the only violent, emancipatory uh, reaction. Now here, here's why it's important. Because make no... It's funny, the way he's talking about it is like it sounds like he's arguing with me, even though he's already gone on like a pretty long tangent. So he's just kind of like talking <laughs> right now. But... Oh. Anyway. Mistake. If you think that, like, Palestinians think that they're going to fucking kill everyone in Israel, you're fucking delusional, okay? That's not the point, nor is it the purpose. The purpose is to say, you cannot consistently occupy us without a fucking price. That's why they're doing terrorism. Do you understand? It's not like, there's no real... There's no real fucking way of, of like violently wiping out everyone in Israel. Nobody fucking thinks that. Hamas doesn't think that. They can say whatever the fuck they want from the comfort of Lebanon or from Doha or wherever, but it doesn't matter. There's no, nobody, nobody literally thinks that they're going to fucking kill every person in Israel. They simply, they simply believe that if you consistently maintain this, uh, no, they don't understand, but thank you for saying it. Oh, you mean uh, people don't understand this? Yes. It doesn't really work, though, does it? Because all it does is make Israel uh, vote for people who want to tighten the occupation and want to stop and want to basically keep on kicking the Palestinian can down the road and, f uh, shoving, and shoving settlements into the West Bank uh, with impunity. That's what it actually gets you. And also what it gets you is you get um, reciprocal fucking airstrikes and attacks from Israel that get a bunch of civilians killed. That's what Hamas really achieves. So it's like, I don't know. You can say there's a rationale. I mean, I can agree somewhere, like to some degree, there would have to be that if you want to occupy us, we're going to make it difficult for you. But Hamas doesn't really do that. Um, like, people love creating this, like, people love creating this notion that, like, yeah, dude, they want to just do genocide. They want to do genocide endlessly. Yeah, Ben Shapiro thinks that because he's a fucking psycho. Oh. No. The goal isn't to, to do fucking genocide. No, nor is, I, I don't know, uh, Hamas's own personal interest in the matter. I don't think, I mean, they updated their charter, but I don't really personally believe that, like, they, if given the opportunity, if they had any kind of uh, real power, would be interested in, like, a secular democratic state, even though they do claim in their new charter that they do. But I, their new charter never actually replaced the old one formally. Um, They say it here. This is the article from when the charter was was out. It was, although it does, uh, so according to diplomatic sources, the new document has been in preparation for years and has been the subject of intense debate between the Hamas factions in Gaza, in exile and in prison. Although it does not explicitly supplant the previous charter of the founding fathers, seen by many as racist, it is being described by those seeking to help Hamas toward a more peaceful path as the contemporary summary of Hamas's beliefs and aims. Yeah, it didn't explicitly supplant the previous charter. Um, and that coupled with their actions on October 7th would kind of imply that the first charter is still, uh, more or less where they're coming from. Yeah, this was a, this was a total ruse. Um, I remember there was some drama in the Twitch space over this at the time. I can't remember who it was between, but someone was pushing the line that Hamas had reformed and other, some other streamer was like, uh, yeah, they got in trouble for it basically. Yeah. Because it was like, a, it was a ruse. It was like, it was just... People been people being fucking scammed by Hamas, basically acting as if they were more moderate than they actually were. Um, yeah, and obviously the new, obviously the October seventh attacks show that, right? Who gives a shit what they want? What 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 matters is what the people want, okay? But the reason why, no, the shot. reason as to why, no way. You need to show documentary on the Warsaw Ghetto. And show the similarities, exclamation mark. <laughs> I just, <laughs> fuck me. Oh no. The way that these guys talk in this chat, I just get the impression of like, ver I get very under, under the age of 16 vibes from a lot of them. But is that really the case? Are, are there really that many people uh, under that, like the age of 16 who would care that much about politics? That definitely wasn't the case when I was young. Um, I <laughs> oh, it's this guy, but he's, he's saying something different now. I don't think Lernerbox's video's errors are simply because he was trying to keep it short and separately. I think it shouldn't be kept short either. If he's going to get into the history, get into it, Hassan Abi. 
Oh, yeah, he, he, uh, he changed the script. He changed the copy-paste. Here looking deeper sound enclave into a base from which they could launch attacks into Israel. After the takeover, Israel and Egypt imposed a blockade over the Strip as a way to stop them from importing weapons, and also any secondary materials that could be used to make weapons. Just by their own admission alone, we know that they have the capacity to produce their own weapons with support from Iran. We know that when Gazan infrastructure gets destroyed, yeah, no, I don't, I, I think that's bullshit too. Again, like that's what Israel claims, and that's the reason why, uh, they... that's what Hamas claims. That's what Hamas claims. They have a blockade, but that's not the real reason why they have a blockade. Why Israel, have a on its own admission, has said that we want to put the Palestinians on a diet when talking about what kind of food is allowed or what, what, the, what the daily caloric uh, uh, requirements come out to. That's bullshit. I don't agree with that. Straight up. I don't agree. So is the blockade to starve Gazans? To make them, like, skinny? Is that... That quote was really, that quote was fucking gross from that Israeli politician who said that they were putting Gazans on a diet, but I don't think that's the purpose of the blockade. Um, I don't know. Why would Egypt put the blockade on Gaza then? I don't know. Agree with that at all. Like, no, I, I, I think that's uh, ridiculous. Does, does Hamas utilize anything and everything they have in their power to create weapons? Absolutely. Do they still sneak oh, in okay. by way of Egypt or Egyptian tunnels? Uh, uh, sneak yeah. in weapons? Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. okay. But, the, but the, idea, the idea that like Israel's blockade is somehow justifiable is incorrect. It's not correct whatsoever. Why did they put the blockade in then? They didn't put the blockade in uh, in 2005. Uh, I'm not saying the blockade is like justified. It's a really bad word to use for it, but like, it's, of course, the blockade's fucking horrible. But like, you need to understand why they're doing it, and I think, I think they're doing it because Hamas were trying to import weapons across the sea. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh. Ever. No. Why do you think a lot of U.S. liberals can obsess over social justice in the U.S. but completely be okay with the genocide of Palestinian people? Hey, Lorna Box's father was involved in the Sabra Shatila. He tweeted about it then deleted. <laughs> Deprogram. This Reddit is so fucking dense. I've never seen so much fucking c saturated mm -hmm. stupidity anywhere on the internet apart from this fucking subreddit. Oh, God. The hyper-literate uh, theory heads <laughs> falling for a fake tweet. Just because. Um, uh, Islamophobia. Very powerful tool. Dude, stop fucking sending me the Sabra and Shatila thing. No, that's not a real fucking tweet. Shut the fuck up. Hey! hey. Shut up. Get him! Absolute fucking Sigma. Given his citations, he read the truth, but is refuted and repeated instead of making excuses for the Israeli occupation. I don't even think that he's making excuses for the Israeli occupation, but I think that there is a there is a consideration here that that falls on the Israeli side. I think he is showing it's impossible to to show the situation as a just one. It's it's not, especially if you're uh, if you're honestly describing events that took place. There are certain points where he is emitting uh, information, in my opinion, to not come across as like openly anti-Israel. Hmm. Interesting. But Ooh. in this hundred year history, there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects that uh there's a lot of aspects of the story that I think get left out in his argument that um in his argument that that certainly makes it seem like Were Jews kicked out of East Jerusalem in nineteen forty eight, uh yeah, by the Jordanians. So. Israel is maybe not a small bean, but like had to do this stuff. And the security concerns yeah, the security concerns have always been uh, the reason why Israel justifies what it does. So, in my opinion, stating that without talking about how fucking utterly ridiculous and inhumane it is, okay, is, is basically doing, uh, you know, a, a, a Israeli propaganda pretty much.
Um, a blockade has been imposed by Israel and Egypt on the movement of goods and people in, in and out of Gaza since 2005. After Hamas takeover in 2007, the blockade aimed to isolate Hamas and prevent smuggling weapons into Gaza. But the blockade predates... Uh, uh, not only does the blockade predate Hamas, but also Israel blew up the fucking airport in 2001. Why the fuck were they... Not since 2005... Again, there was violence in 2005, wasn't there? Hang on, wait. But I don't think that was like the same, because border crossings were still open. No, they say the blockade of the Strip started in 2007. I think they still had, they, that wiki must mean blockade as in they controlled the border, but I don't think the blockade was actually put in, in place. Um, they say a blockade has been imposed on the movement of goods and people. Then they say after 2007, the blockade aimed to isolate Hamas. So generally people date the blockade at 2007. I'm guessing by 2005, they just mean that Israel still had control over the border and the sea. Yeah. You don't actually think that, right? What, what do I not think? Think what? Not allowed to have an airport ever again. Where was Hamas then? Like, they were marginal at best, still. In 2001. In 2001, uh, Hamas did most of the suicide bombings, I think. They were not, not there. I don't know if that's why Israel bombed the airport. Um, uh, let me not read that about that one. I think the problem with 2001 was that Israel's response to the Second Intifada was just so fucking disproportionate. Um, loads of Palestinians died under that. And they had no problem using, like, live ammunition even when protesters were unarmed. But let's see. Um, I know the disengagement was 2005, but that article is suggesting the blockade was in 2005. That's not... You don't think that Duma was not the reason why Israel needed to do this? I don't know what you're saying. Never mind. Well, but they were still being propped up as the major reason, right? I don't know what you mean by that. I'm just saying, it's like, come on. Oh, he's back. He's now back launching on attacks it. into Israel. The work <laughs> He's back on it. Your completely admirable charitability is wasted on loan of a permit scheme in Gaza was almost completely wiped out. And the six border crossings into the country have been regularly closed. And ultimately, the Gazan economy and the people working in the enclave are the ones who pay the cost. For one example, in 2006, when a border crossing was closed after an attack, farmers were unable to get their goods out to international buyers. Stranded at the border, they eventually had to dump their produce into a field. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. This is not like, this is not Hamas that's doing this. Yeah. You can't just, like, say, you can't just say, like, this is Hamas is doing. This is Hamas is doing because, like, Israel security concerns are valid here. Like, I don't even think he believes that. And leave it to get eaten up by goats. But the biggest new feature of Hamas coming to power in Gaza has been the wars, of which there have been quite a few. Usually, these wars will start with either a rocket barrage from Gaza or... No, that's not how they start. I don't think that's how they start. I don't think that the wars start because... Uh, I think they do, or they start because um, Israel like uh, breaks a ceasefire to smash, like a, to hit like a tunnel or some building that they, they has like rockets on it or something. Lonerbox has a history of worrying about reverse genocide by Palestinians against Israelis. I'm always worrying about that. Because uh, Hamas out of nowhere is just like, all right, time to fucking send rockets into Israel. That's not how that works. Time and time again, these, first of all, the 2018 border protest is a great example. Uh, holy fuck, the way that they describe this is insane on Wikipedia. Jesus Christ. I never, I never read Wikipedia pages for this kind of stuff, but God damn. During the 2018 Land Day protest, 168 Palestinians have been killed and thousands were injured during clashes with Israeli troops at the Gaza-Israel border. They weren't clashes, man. Those were the Israeli... They were clashes. They were clashes, but the, the, even the UN report found that the people who died were not posing a, th a significant threat. They were clashes. There were people throwing like Molotov cocktails and those fucking like incendiary balloons and shit. So yeah, there was a lot of uh, shit going on. But yeah, it seems like one of those deaths was ruled by the UN to be actually someone who was properly. Yeah. Was it one? It might have been more than one, but it was, I think it was less than 10. But they were clashes. It just doesn't mean that um, 
it's still you can still say there were clashes even though the because well, what usually happens people have this very again it's when you say things are like comically evil right um it's not that the idf like goes and just like fucking shoots people for no reason that doesn't really happen very often but what does happen is when there is the slightest bit of tension or there is like um like stones being thrown or like smoke screens being put up by setting tires on fire then even if protesters are not uh, posing like a deadly threat, they'll still get met with live rounds. That's like a more accurate description of how the IDF works. They're very, they're just insanely disproportionate when it comes to protesters and uh, like demonstrators that turn violent. Yeah. They, yeah, they just ramp up. But yeah, because that's their policy. Their policy is very much like no nonsense in their eyes. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's brutal. Yeah. Mm. Okay these snipers just opening up fire on fucking children and, and pregnant women and and nurses and shit what so th no, that's that's not the okay the fuck dude i just gave you the accurate okay. portrayal of it i, so it's okay. I had I, I did say originally that there's a copy paste loner box is a history of worrying about reverse genocide by palestinians against israelis let's do it <laughs> that um if you look at wikipedia given how brutal and unjustifiable uh, the Israeli occupation is like it's almost impossible for you to arrive at the conclusion that Israel is in the right in any capacity. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong, okay? Because holy fuck, that's crazy. Like 10,000 people were severely, gravely wounded by sniper rifle fire. It was not a fucking clash. It was like Israel's always just murking people, like civilians, and then being like, it's a clash. What is reverse genocide? Every it's when the oppressed instance, people every uh, single instance. It's when the oppressed people kill the oppressors. Uh, yeah. Like you can point to you can point to like uh, geopolitical concerns in the region to why Hamas operates in the way that they do. But in the overwhelming majority of of rocket fire into Israel, okay? Rocket fire into Israel is always an act of retaliation to something that Israel is doing that many members of the Israeli security forces Openly keep telling, just like before October 7th, the Shin Bet uh, did, openly keep telling the Israeli government, hey, stop fucking murking people in the West Bank. You're really going to piss the Palestinians off. It's going to be a security concern. It's going to be a security issue. It's going to be a matter of national security. How is Wikipedia not a good way to get an overview of something? I mean, I think it's a decent way, but uh, I mean, this is a, like, <laughs> I just showed you why this is like a ridiculously, uh, a ridiculously biased way to look at the situation. You can be easily misled, hmm. it seems. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Notice me, Hassan. The Great March of Returns has been what? You know, I wonder what the problem is. I, I, I'm starting to think, like, it's possible, because I threw this video together quite quickly, and because I do like to pose narratives to, left, to like, left-leaning audiences that they haven't heard already, um, or, like, sides of the story. Maybe, I don't know if I... I'm trying to think if I actually did miss out so this the whole intro is about there's the nakba right with a one part at the end of october 7th i want to see how actually true it is if i didn't add like a proportionate amount of israeli atrocities in this because i don't think hassan's bothered by me leaving out palestinian suffering i mentioned a lot of palestinian suffering in the video but maybe it's not enough uh, palestinian suffering at the hands of israel that might be the problem that he's having i don't know let me see because I've mentioned a lot of suffering that they go through at the hands of Hamas, which people don't really mention that much. Um, let me see. So this is uh, the, all the ancient stuff. This is Jewish people suffering uh, at the hands of British and uh, Palestinians. Then this is uh, the 48 war, the fucking Nakba, with a huge refugee population getting cucked. This is pretty much Palestinian suffering. Uh, this is Palestinian suffering at the hands of Egypt, then at the hands of uh, the IDF. I know people thought this was me excusing the fucking executions and uh, the massacres. Uh, it definitely wasn't. Uh, let's see. Six day war. Um, I guess I just kind of glossed over the Arab aggression here. The, uh, and the build up. Ooh, annexation of East Jerusalem, uh, Hamas, Hamas bad, Hamas bad, 
Hamas not very popular. Peace process. This is anti-Israel because of the fucking the peace process. This part here is kind of neutral, I guess. The work permits. Loner box. This bit is explaining why people move towards Hamas. Bastard. Um, disengagement. This is how Hamas came to power. This bit is Hamas fucking over Palestinians. This bit is just Hamas being bad. This is, I'd say this is partially Hamas fucking over the Palestinians. Maybe the security measures were too excessive, but... Um, yeah, the guy got fucking... Like, those farmers got absolutely ruined by the fucking border closures there. The wars... The wars do usually start with rocket Loader barrages, box. I think. You smarmy I think when ceasefires are broken, it's either by rocket barrages or by Israel attacking some fucking tunnel or some shit. Yeah. Even if we assume there, this is going to be the anti-Israel stuff, Israeli recklessness. This is the anti-Hamas stuff. The thing is, I don't think this, I think this anti-Israel stuff is even going to fucking... Um, this even this anti-Israel stuff isn't gonna isn't gonna feel like anti-Israel enough. Because I said recklessness. Even though recklessness constitutes like a violation of Geneva Convention and war crimes, right? Um they're gonna say that's not going hard enough, I suppose. Or because it's both sides in. Um That's my guess anyway. Loner box. Then the the end is mostly anti-Netanyahu. This whole last bit is against Netanyahu. No, I don't know. Feel like I could have got maybe thrown a bit more emphasis on Palestinian suffering throughout that, but I feel like general is okay. I don't know. I don't know, guys. We're just trying to do our best out here, you know. Committed acts of violence directed towards the Israeli side. What? The Israeli officials said the demonstration was used by Hamas to cover for launching attacks against Israel. What do you mean? Like they? They threw rocks when, when the Israeli snipers started opening fire. What, what violence? See, they, okay, this is the thing, though. Is like, uh, they didn't just throw rocks. They threw Molotov cocktails. They threw up incendiary balloons. There was like lots of smoke fucking coming up from the... Yeah. <coughs> to hide the projectiles going... Yeah, they, no, they were being quite aggressive. Again, that doesn't take away from the fact that the IDF response was insanely disproportionate. Yeah, there were pipe bombs as well. That doesn't take away from the fact... That the IDF response was was not insanely disproportionate. That doesn't take that away. I don't know why you just you, but I, I think it's because people feel that adding that bit in like just muddies the water like a little bit, and that's just too much. Um, like the story is a lot more pure when you just say they were throwing rocks. Yeah. At almost <laughs> this <guy> all <laughs> of these rocket attacks. <laughs> this guy's funny. I'm not seeing an answer. This person's probably joking because of the Sabra Satila thing that I corrected them on. Are you autistic? No, just retarded. <laughs> I'd rather hear it from... Well, no, wait. I just explained to this person why the other tweet was fake. This guy is a troll. This person's an absolute troll. I'm not seeing an answer. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just. All of them oftentimes happen as a consequence of hostage swaps that come at the heels of like 10,000 people being held under uh, uh, unjustifiable detainment in the apartheid state or, or rocket fire being sent into Israel. Oh, IRI is firing up. He didn't say no, eyeballs. Oh, no. This is where this comes into play. Here's Barnaby Rain. 2.2 million people penned into an open air prison in Gaza. The significant majority of those people are not from Gaza. They're refugees who were ethnically cleansed from their homes in 1948. Now, I know that the people mm. you admire are fine with that. Winston Churchill said he didn't mind when a superior race displaced an inferior one. No. That's how he talked about what happened no. in Palestine. But, mo but some of no. us no. No. Most of Britain. Most of the people, 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 people living in Israel have had to go there fleeing yeah. persecution where they live, and mainly persecution in the Middle East. No, actually, yes. That's that, true. That is true. The majority of Jews are in Israel are not, um, they're non-white, right? 
But also a lot of the white ones were like Holocaust survivors who had to, again, doesn't justify the ethnic cleansing. It's just, it's just, uh, yeah, you can, again, why do you have to deny the fucking fact? You can just say that doesn't give, just being a refugee doesn't give you the right to fucking throw another person, make someone else a refugee. Fuck. Crazy. Dog, the Holocaust happened. What the fuck are you saying, big homie? God damn it, dude. Yes, I know who Jacob Rees Mogg is. He's one of the absolute worst. If there was a, if there was a fucking freak that like, Perfectly embodied being a Tory. There it is. Big homie said they were they were fleeing violence, mostly from the Middle East. Don't you know the Holocaust was done as a consequence of the Grand Mufti? That is what Benjamin Netanyahu told me. And I believe him. He is Jewish after all. And uh, I, I, you don't have to... Uh, well, I guess I'll just do the, do the Hassan treatment, will I? Uh, ho -ho. Uh, you don't have to downplay the suffering of Mizrahi and Sephardic Jews in the Middle East, especially after 48, because they suffered pretty hard as a result of like the, a war that they had nothing to do with. Well, because just because they were Jewish. I, I, fuck, it's, it's the worst thing I see is when people say that like the, uh, the anti-Semitism in the Middle East was a reaction to Israeli colonialism. I'm like, bro, this is why... like. You're basically using anti-Zionist arguments to justify anti-Semitism. It's really weird. No wonder the line is so blurry to some people. Um, you don't need. You can you can acknowledge all of that. It still doesn't. You can acknowledge all of the problems with the Middle East when it came to Jews uh, in North Africa and the Middle East. None of it gave them the right to make uh, Palestinians into refugees. You can just say that. Um, but again, I guess like the because it makes that a little bit too nuanced and it's more difficult to it shouldn't be though. I don't know. I think some people just like they prefer a much more black and white narrative, even when it's not quite the case. Um I don't know. Um well, you know, it's anti-Semitic uh, if I uh, don't agree with him on that one. Oh, are you telling me that uh, you're also a Jewish historian, Barnaby? Okay, well, uh well, did you know? I'll have you know, I'm anti-Semitic. But a very specific type of anti-Semite, only anti-Semitic to Jews who are anti-Zionist. Yes, Barnaby. <laughs> I will now engage in a Holocaust revisionism. <laughs> Calling it a reaction doesn't mean you think it's justified. Uh, the way people say it, I think it is. Yeah, uh, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, actually, no. Depending on the context, you can say it was a reaction, but like, I, I not nah, every time I hear people say that, no, nah, it doesn't sound like, depends on the context, but fuck me. When someone is like never willing to give any kind of like condemnation or any kind of like, uh, put, pose any attack to the way Jews were treated in those areas, I, yeah, I don't know. There are mainly uh, Sephardi Jews. Some of my family members who live in yeah. Israel came from, from Europe. Yes, but the majority didn't. didn't. The majority you know why, came from the Middle East. Do you know East? why my family went to Israel, Jacob? It's because white Christian Europeans who believed in tradition and hierarchy Have spent 2,000 years excluding mm. and then massacring us. So I will take no lectures from white Christian Europeans who believe in order and hierarchy about anti-Semitism. Uh, you Just because people uh -oh. like you spent thousands of years murdering us, I don't think Palestinians... People like me did not price. do that, actually. Well, you can't... Know. Wait, first of all, he yeah. literally is like... I, I feel like he probably is... The... Damn. Bit soy. Bit soy. Directly responsible for some, some pogroms. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Isn't he like, a, I mean, he's upper class. <laughs> you, you, can, you can tell, you can track these guys like lineage back to a couple <laughs> fucking days. <no? laughs> yeah. Jacob Reese Mogg's family was responsible for some pogroms. What, like in the fucking 1100s or whatever? The UK did do a lot of anti Jewish purges. Um, but I think it was like the monarchs that did that, like Edward the First and shit. <laughs> I love why there's something about this sphere. What is it about this whole sphere that's always like? <laughs> I wonder what your great great granddaddy was up to. <laughs> why? Why is it always? The why does it have to go there? It has no reason to ever have to go there. <laughs> Hmm, well, you descend from the upper class of Wiltshire, and uh, I read once about the Wiltshire purge of Jews in the year of our Lord, 1283. 
What was the place again? What was the place where the fucking paragliders were that that woman got upset because she thought it was Hamas attacking? And we found out that this community, Doncaster, the Doncaster has like no juice. <laughs> uh, you say you are afraid of these paragliders, milady. But as a Doncaster resident, it is plausible, highly plausible, that you are in fact descended from one of the perpetrators of the Jewish purge of Doncaster. The of our Lord. <laughs> 1344. BC. Mm. Yeah. White you can't blame me. White Christian you can't blame me for Israel is 90% Doncaster Jews. <laughs> and their lives matter, okay? I'll say it. I'm tired of holding it in. Do you, know why I do? Do, do you know it. why I do? Do you know why I do? Because the same logic that says that some life is worthwhile and other lives aren't. That logic that no, essentially- His grandfather was the man who literally turned Jews away during World War II source. Trust me, it feels right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Face jar. All life, Christian all Europe, life is valuable. Jews all life is valuable. valuable. But now, surely, that same logic is meted out to Palestinians. Surely, the state of Israel, surely the state of Israel has the right guilt, to defend itself. Palestinians who are ethnically cleansed to pay for Europe's. But they're not ethnically cleansed. cleansed. This just isn't true. They're not ethnically cleansed. That why what? is Gaza the most one of the, the most densely populated places? The Israeli the state why? is trying to defend itself. <laughs> the Israeli state is trying to defend itself by forcing the Palestinian dogs into. I mean, uh, the Palestinian humans. <laughs> Sorry. I got ahead of myself. Uh, Israel has a right to defend itself by doing an apartheid. I love apartheid. It is my favorite thing. Sorry, it is my culture. I am British after all. I love partitions. It is in my nature to tell me that I cannot do partitions in areas that I have no business being in. To be fair, British people love a partition. Do you know why all these fucking white leftists are like one state solution with equal rights for all? Because I'm telling you, we all know the gerrymandering of that fucking state would be absolutely insane. Do you know why they say that? Why white leftists love the one state solution? It's because they want to partition. It's because they want to draw some more border. It's because they want, it's because they, there's a border with the West Bank and they want to fuck with it. They're like, I see a, there's a border over there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change it. <laughs> it's in their blood. The Palestinians are like, bro, what the fuck? We want to live in a Palestinian ma majority. What are you talking about? <laughs> we want to be a Palestinian majority, either in one state, which would not be binational, or as the two state. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the case, no? Because when polling is done on one state solution, they split it up into one Palestinian state from the river to the sea, and the other one is the binational state with equal rights and representation for Arabs and Jews. But that second one is a lot less popular than the first one. Are you for two states? I don't do the fucking two state versus one state horse shit, okay? I don't do that. Because Palestinians, and probably Israelis as well, don't agree on either of them. I'd rather just be like, stop the settlements. <laughs> see what happens next, you know? See, what, see what's possible after that. Strength of the PA. Um, fucking start punishing settlers who commit crimes against West Bank locals. <laughs> like, properly. Get some fucking law and order in that place. <gasps> you know, make some progress and show that and uh, g strengthen their ability to self-govern. And then just see what that maybe leads to one state. Maybe. Maybe it makes more people want two states. I don't know. Just uh, stop with this fucking Stop with the partition gene. Stop with this white obsession with seeing a border and being like, you know, I'm going to oh, change that border. Stop it. It's weird. I mean, these guys... A lot of Gazan civilians die. That's crazy. Come on, loner bogs. They're not. They're not acting within the fucking... Dude, dude. They're... Oh, this is when I, I... I know what I said here. I know there's no way you can miss what I said here. Pass the government on. quickly to the Labour Party so the Labour Party will be accused for diminishing the state of the UK. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys are fucking rabid, dude. They're...
The I result is that even if we assume Israel is acting within the laws of armed conflict, they said, even if we assume, I said, even if we assume, even if we assume, I don't think Israel acts within the laws of armed conflict because <laughs> in previous wars, people have said, you're not acting within the laws of armed conflict. <laughs> like, I'm going to show fucking evidence. Oh, sorry. They're not. A lot of guys and civilians die. That's great. Come on, loner bogs. They're not. They're not acting within the fucking... Dude, dude, there is not a single... First of all, the UN doesn't agree with this, and there's not a single human rights group that would agree with that. Nobody agrees that Israel, with the exception of America, Israel's greatest defender, no one believes that Israel is operating within the boundaries of human, uh, international human uh, rights. Well, with the exception of America. One more time for the civilians die. One more time for the boys. Finishing the state of the UK. One more time for the boys. Um, yeah, I mean, these guys are fucking rabid, dude. They're... The result is that even if we assume Israel is <gasps> acting within the laws of armed conflict, they're not. A lot of guys and civilians. Even if die. we assume that's crazy. Come on, loner bogs. They're not. They're not acting within the fucking dude. Dude, there is not a single. First of all, the UN doesn't agree with this, and there's not a single human rights group that would agree with that. Nobody agrees that Israel, with the exception of America, Israel's greatest defender. No one believes that Israel is operating within the boundaries of human uh, international human uh, rights. No, they're not. Source Wikipedia for fuck's sake. I've, <laughs> Hassan's been reading the Wikipedia for the whole fucking stream. There's nothing wrong with getting the Wikipedia. For what? The Israeli government's stated goal. Do you disagree with this? Does someone disagree that Israel's stated goal is to stop um, Hamas? It's all like they're going in there saying, we want to destabilize the place and kill children. They're not saying that. They're saying they want to... Oh, fuck me. The they facts are the facts. Time and time I can't, again, I can't lied stop it. Said, I can't stop oh, yeah, you guys, we're just you know? dealing with Hamas. We're dealing with Hamas. But no... No, they, Hamas. they were never dealing with Hamas. They just wanted to Hamas. keep punishing ruthlessly everyone inside of Gaza. Oh, there's it is again. He's gone back to the first one. <laughs> this guy. This fucking guy. I want to talk to this guy. I need him. I need this person in my life. You went back to the first copy. Your admirable charge for this is waste on loader book. <laughs> okay. with there are a few reasons for this. One, Gaza is one of the most densely populated areas on Earth, making it almost impossible for civilians to separate themselves from military targets. Two is Israeli recklessness. In the 2008 war, they were challenged for their use of white phosphorus in a densely populated area. They're just like I wouldn't call that challenged for their use of white phosphorus. I would say that that is a, a real war crime. That's not reckless. Like that's del recklessness is a war crime. I should have been clearer of that because I think recklessness does constitute war crime. Um, but yeah. Maybe I should have just used the word. I can't, it's like reckless, assuming what? Assuming recklessness is fine. <laughs> oh, oh I, I imagine it's because a lot of them think that it's not, I think a lot of them think it's because they're actually just trying to kill as many people as possible. That's probably what's underlying a lot of people who get annoyed by the word reckless. Deliberate, that's, that is not reckless. That's just war crimes. They did a war crime and, and they always do war crimes. For sure. Destruction of a wastewater treatment. By the way, they didn't learn from their mistake because they did it again this time around. Leave me the fuck alone. Loner Box is a waste of charitability, whether Hassan can see that at the moment or not. <laughs> I'm too. Plant, which had no discernible military use, their methods of warning people to evacuate targeted areas has often been criticized. For example, roof knocking, where they drop a small explosive on top of a target as a way of warning the civilians inside to evacuate. It turns out that technique is kind of ineffective. It seems to be the case that roof knocks are actually quite hard to distinguish, especially when there are explosions going off all around you. Who defunct that? And more relevant to the present day, they've also been criticized for their failure to allow the free passage of medical items, food, and clothing. And three, there is Hamas's strategy of embedding themselves in civilian infrastructure. And I know the phrase human shield does sound a bit comical, but it's not a meme. Not only oh. does Hamas place their military infrastructure in residential buildings, schools, and mosques, they've also gone so far as to commandeer people's individual houses to use as temporary military bases. Some of these Israel-Hamas conflicts would only last a few days. Okay. Zayn, how true is this? Okay. <laughs> there is no official military infrastructure in uh, Gaza, right? Apart from maybe the tunnels. But none of those buildings are like, this is a military building, this is a, there's no, uh, let's see, anyway. I'm just looking at the, uh, I'm just looking at the chat. For every one singular instance of this happening, there are a thousand instances where Israel indiscriminately is leveling entire city blocks. There is no, there is absolutely zero 
absolutely zero reason to hand it to Israel by saying, oh, it's human shields. Okay? How do you use a home as a military base? No, they Gaza is densely populated, of course. And so is Tel Aviv, by the way. Did you notice that? Tel Aviv is also very densely populated. Israel is also areas areas where where uh, Israeli citizens live are also very densely populated. And guess what? Your honorable charge builds these ways of the alert box. service in Israel, a lot of those uh, uh, enemy combatant aged males and also women too are technically, uh, uh, could be at any given moment, active duty service members. This does not justify uh, Hamas deliberately fucking attacking civilian populations. If it doesn't justify Hamas deliberately attacking civilian populations, like they did on October 7th, it certainly does not justify Israel doing so, especially when one, they have the population registry. They literally call people. They know who lives where. They have a massive surveillance uh, apparatus that they're predator drones on top of fucking uh, Gaza every goddamn day. Like the IDF headquarters are in a civilian area as well. This does not justify nuking Israel, okay? They know what they're bombing. And yes, Hamas does uh, uh, fucking use residential buildings from time to time to fucking throw rockets or not even residential Is buildings. This whole time to time thing, I don't get. Like, do we, I get, do we know? I feel like, I just feel like you would have some evidence to say that the IDF are really just seeing a residential block and they're like, is there any Hamas in there? Uh, don't care. Can take it out. I, I just don't know if that's what's happening. I think what might be happening is that they see like a weapon fucking stockpile is in a particular area or there's a rocket launch pad or there's a Hamas communication center and they go for it and they don't really care about warning people in time or they uh, or they just go for it when a warning could have been given. Like I think that's probably more likely to than the just indiscriminate bombing. They do take out entire blocks, but again, we like we don't know if that block has been cleared out, or we don't know if like there, if you can't see from the outside what the block is being used for. But it's not from time to time. This is their entire strategy. It's that they're they're all all of Hamas's military shit is in civilian uh, infrastructure, apart from the tunnels. I don't think they have separate military bases anywhere, as far as I know. Um, Buildings, but specifically in between residential buildings where they actually fucking throw rockets. But like, of course they're going to do that. What the fuck? Where, just, where are they supposed to lob rockets from? Like, what do you mean? Where are they supposed to like lob the rockets from? That, the idea that Hamas uses human shields while Israel does not have human I think we've established pretty clearly that the rockets don't work. <laughs> what the fuck do the rockets do? How are we supposed to fire our rockets if not from this fucking school? Like, what? <laughs> I don't. If not from near this block of flats that's going to get clapped by the IDF. Um... Uh. human shields is fucking crazy okay it's crazy it's completely ridiculous they're making do with the limited resources that they have okay they have nothing so they're making do with the limited resources they have in times where they feel as though israel is increasing the pressure in the west bank and they consistently keep doing this the goal is not to like kill every jewish person okay the goal is not to to, to do genocide on israel they know they do not have the power to do that anyway okay the goal is to say hey you can't keep occupying us without paying a fucking price that's the goal you can consider that terrorism. I do, especially when it's uh, targeting civilians. But ultimately, that doesn't change the reality of what that goal is, okay? How do you view settlers in the West Bank vis-a-vis -vis distinguishing civilians and legitimate targets? I think a settler is still a civilian, but they're very likely to lose that fucking protection because they're so violent. I think with fighting against settlers, it should be like self-defense rules, basically. If, they, if they're going to attack you, you should be able to allow to fucking use whatever you need to do to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes to outposts, I think their property is completely fair game. If an outposter wants to set up a caravan in the West Bank, against even against Israeli law, um, let alone international, then it would be okay, I think, for some fucking paraglider, ski mast, fucking teenager, zoomer, TikToker to go in there and blow it up when they're, preferably when they're outside of the thing, and then just like send them back <laughs> to Israel. Um, underneath Gaza, okay, in certain parts of Gaza. Now, I also know that you can't really reach that tunnel network by uh, using the conventional uh, missiles that you're using, okay? So that also kind of destroys that. Uh, that also kind of destroys that argument too. But the notion that, um, the notion that like, Hamas is not playing fair is fucking ridiculous. Of course, of course they're not fucking playing fair. What do you mean? They're, they're fighting against, they're fighting against a fucking apartheid. Like, what are we talking about? 
Their tactics are brutal. Their tactics are ruthless. It's not whether or not they're playing fair, though. It's whether or not they're, like, they're committing war crimes, right? <laughs> um, and also, what, what advantage are Hamas getting from their actions? They're riling up the Middle East. Uh, they put a wedge in the Saudi peace agreements, but it's like, for what, you know? It's, again, Hamas, fact, there's no way Hamas doesn't factor in if we do X, uh, if we do this attack, Israel will airstrike Gaza and a bunch of civilians will die. But they just don't care. They obviously don't care. Because their tactics are violent, okay? But, like, we can't even fucking meet Israel on the same metrics as Hamas. What, what are we doing? What, what are we doing here? Like, we, we can't set the same fucking moral standard for one of the most, one of the largest militaries on the fucking planet, really? Like, one of the largest militaries on the planet with a nuke cannot meet the same moral playing field as a fucking violent uh, militia in, a, in an occupied open-air prison? Like, really? I mean, think about that. Of course it's not fair. What is the expectation here? That, like, Hamas is supposed to be fucking launching rockets from the, the, out in the open? Are you implying Hamas is moral? I, I think the expectation is... Is that if they're going to use violence... Use it in a way where you can show that this act will lead to this positive outcome. I don't know. It's not like some fucking imperative that Hamas has to launch rockets at Israel. It's like, how are they supposed to fire their rockets? They don't have to fire rockets. What have they gained ever from firing rockets? I think occasionally in the past, they've managed to get um, problems into, like, into the front pages by firing rockets, right? I think... Um, I'm pretty sure when Sheikh Jarrah was happening, when those evictions were happening, it didn't go into the headlines until Hamas fired rockets. Like, but again, you're sacrificing your own people for that shit. It's like... Hmm. I don't know. I feel like Gaza gets a pretty high amount of international aid as well. I think per person, they're one of the most, the biggest recipients of international aid like ever. But yeah, of course they could have done better things with that than uh, October 7th. West Bank aren't firing rockets and what do they gain? Again, well, the, okay. At, at the very least, Blackfish, they're not getting flattened, okay? Um, at the very least. I'm not saying... The Palestinians should be non-violent. It's a military occupation. You probably do need to use some violence, but like there are forms of violence in the West Bank that are more justified, right? Like I think a lot of what um, those militant groups that kind of act in place of a ineffective police force uh, in like Nablus and Janine, like I think they're they, there's actually it's quite clear why they're popular because the Palestinians who live there are not adequately protected either by the PA or by the IDF, so it makes sense that they're there. Um, that's nothing to do with like, just because you feel like you have to do violence against the against an occupation doesn't mean you have to do any kind of violence. You have to think about whether you, that particular act of violence is achieving anything. And Hamas just doesn't. <laughs> Everything Lornerbox says approves what IDF says. Uh, I don't think that's true, but okay. Quote, like no serious person should ever fucking use that. I hope he's joking. You must stop the terror. For the sake of the Palestinians who suffer... <laughs> For the sake of the Israelis who are under attack, we must stop the terror. And for the Israeli right wing, this relation is kind of a good thing. The lack of Palestinian unity means there's no pressure to ever revive the peace process. The terror attacks from Hamas serve to push more and more Israelis further to the right. Eventually, the Israeli- I can't tell if he's like using that as a joke to say like that's bad and stupid. It's, or if he believes I'm a little it's obviously a fuck. <laughs> The voters reach a point. He isn't joking at fucking all. <laughs> Doesn't sound like he's joking. Ah, it's just so funny the like the impact of like once you poison the well, what it does to people. <laughs> like holy shit. Um. <laughs> in fact, Netanyahu was one of many right wing voices who opposed the Gaza pullout in two thousand and five. He actually resigned over it and publicly warned that it would result in Gaza becoming a base for terror. Every attack from Hamas is his way of telling the Israeli public that he was right, that Palestinians cannot be negotiated with, that they need to be handled with strength. 
The result is that the Israeli voters keep pushing towards the right, the state continues to expand settlements into the West Bank with impunity, and any question of what should ultimately be done with the Palestinians is kept quiet. This, in turn, helps Hamas. With no foreseeable progress- Oh, they also now think I'm characterizing Netanyahu's argument by saying like, oh my god, <laughs> okay. Coming from Fetah, and with increasing settler violence in the West Bank, Palestinians feel more and more that they have no other option than violence. If they're not turning to Hamas, it's to paramilitary groups like Lion's Den and the Janine Brigades. In Gaza, the collective trauma of Israeli airstrikes and the hopelessness of life under blockade produces a similar outcome. Hamas may not be as popular as some people think, but the people in Gaza- Oh, Hamas isn't even- <sighs> Sorry, Hassan, so sorry. <laughs> like... <laughs> Hassan's not even there to see me saying the shit that he agrees with, probably. <laughs> oh, God. Don't have much of an alternative. And all of this works to further Netanyahu's claim that Palestinians are too violent and too fragmented to make peace with. And he does seem to be kind of aware of this. In the last decade- Not kind of aware of this. It is deliberate. It is by design. Also, uh, the Janine Brigade is just- The Janine Brigades. Um, I mean, it's like, it's a, it's a standing military at that point uh, on, on uh, occupied territory. I mean, if you if you shut out any kind of militant resistance to Israeli occupation on Palestinian territory, then like you have nothing. Like you know what I mean? Then then you're not giving anybody any outs here in this conversation, right? Um, like what would he? He's being pedantic. No, he's not. He's not even being pedantic. I think he's just he doesn't. Um, I feel like he's not listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> so what I think is happening. I feel like he's listening to little fragments here and there, and just with this, I guess, base assumption that I'm a bit more lib. And like he's like, oh, okay, what would a lib say about the Janine Brigades? Oh, they'd probably say they're unjust, right? Like, again, I even said like a few minutes ago that the Janine Brigades like make sense, and I said before that that what? Do... No, I feel like I made sense there with what I was saying. And even when I was saying that, oh, Palestinians can't be negotiated with, they're too crazy and shit, I was saying that that's Netanyahu's argument. And the, the chat's just like, what? what? Like, I can't believe Lord of Box would say this about the Palestinians. I, like, I did it. Fuck me. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's like, once the fucking tone has been set, there's no going back. That's what I'm, there's no point trying to fucking, as soon as the, the fucking pigeonholing begins, there's no coming back from it. Um. What, are they not supposed to have any fucking military? Like the only fucking people allowed to have guns is like the Palestinian Authority thugs that like Israel uh, has has uh, allowed. To Although have I think what's weird about this is, did before him watching this video, did I not tell Hassan that I was that I didn't think violence that I thought violence against the occupation was just? I did. Yeah, I did say that violence was justifiable. Oh, it's a big, long message, but yeah. Weapons so they can, like, turn... No, I think it maybe is. I think it's also maybe uh, taking descriptive statements and assuming that they're morally weighted. I feel like most of what I was doing here was trying to be descriptive. But, yeah. Needs uh, in, in violent emancipatory resistance to perish. That's it. Like, I don't believe that uh, human beings, no matter how much I want them to be, are going to, uh, I mean, I, I don't think that it's, it's right to, to demand that Palestinians just like sit there and take it and be perfect victims and get slaughtered. Hamas is his way of telling the Israeli public. Yeah, I, I agree with that. <sighs> he was right. That Palestinians cannot be negotiated with. That they need to be handled with strength. The result is that the Israeli voters keep pushing towards the right, the state continues to expand settlements into the West Bank with impunity, and any question of what should ultimately- U.S. trouble by Israeli settlement expansion plans- to be done with the Palestinians is kept- Like, this is- I'm sorry, but to act like West Bank settlements are a result- like, or people turn the other cheek to West Bank settlements as a result of Hamas violence in, uh, from Gaza is, is so, so unacceptable. I, I don't agree with that either. If anything, Hamas violence is a consequence, a direct consequence of West Bank- I definitely didn't say that, but uh, okay. Settlements. There is infinitely more arguments to be presented in that on that side. It's ahistorical. Settlements predate Hamas, and one can absolutely state that settlements are directly. Like, Why are this thing is ahistorical? I said the result is that Israel keeps on expanding settlements with impunity, <laughs> which they do. They're doing it much worse than any like any other time. Uh, oh God. I, yeah, I, they're talking to people. I feel like he's talking to someone who's not there he's not talking to okay it is a historical it's like, like dialogue tree i've yeah. used this example time and time again but former 
security officials themselves while they were in power and also after they were no longer in power have said time and time again that this is a direct reason as to why Palestinians push back, Palestinians fight back, Palestinians fucking throw rockets into Israel. Yeah. Newer polling showing Israeli raising only for suicide bombing. What? Like, I'm sorry, but I don't, I, I don't agree with this at all. I don't think that this is correct. I don't think that, I don't think that the Israeli... What does he, wait, what, what does he think I'm saying? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> when Hamas fights with Israel, Israelis freak out because uh, a couple of Israelis die. And that pushes Israel to the right. And that gives license to right-wing Israelis who always to expand settlements more aggressively than like a left-wing government would, which they do. The left wing uh, Israeli governments don't stop settlements, but they expand at a far more like a far slower rate than the right wingers do. I don't know what's historical about that. He's, yeah, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Officials themselves even fully agree with this. Like, if that was the case, then um, like Shimbet members wouldn't regularly talk about fucking violence that uh, Palestinians are subjected to in the West Bank and be in it being a, a legitimate uh, a, a legitimate security concern because there will inevitably be retaliation. Quiet. This in turn helps Hamas. This in turn helps Hamas, makes it seem like they're like a fucking group that's being voted in or some shit <laughs> over and over again in the same way that like Likud is or, or uh, Netanyahu can uh, keep creating a... Loader. Well, they still it's stay slurping. popular enough that Abbas doesn't want to have elections, no? It's not, Ham it's not Hamas who are canceling elections, it's, it's Abbas who's doing that. Right-wing cabinet, you know what I mean? Like... Let her do whatever she wants? No, she's not allowed. With no foreseeable progress coming from Feta, and with increasing settler violence in the West Bank, Palestinians feel- Like, no progress coming from Feta is also incorrect. Feta is, is a feckless, powerless institution, and that is the Israeli design for Feta. And for the record, I think- Wait, that's- that, <laughs> that means there's no foreseeable progress coming from them. Um... It's so interesting. He's like, he's disagreeing with me, and uh, to agree with me. It's so bizarre. Okay. This is why I fucking despise the these are valid security concerns argument. There is no valid security concern in an apartheid state because one, it's immoral, okay? Fuck your security. And two, you're literally creating less security. There is no way to permanently maintain an apartheid state. Okay, the, the first argument's a bit weird, but the second part, I even uh, the whole thesis I'm giving here is that Israel is uh, perpetuating the insecurity. Um, I wonder if he'll figure that out by the end. Should we take bets? Should we take bets? I wonder if you'll figure out that I'm making like basically the same thesis he is, only in probably a slightly more factual way. Um, uh, Without it inevitably coming back to bite you in the fucking ass, October 7th is the proof. Think about how, how restrictive the Israeli occupation is. I'm not saying I agree with the first part. Uh, the, uh, of course, even if you're overseeing apartheid, like you still have to protect your civilians to some degree, right? Um, it just means that, like, it's again, it's confusing a military question with a political question. The military question is you should be allowed to defend yourself. You should be allowed to have security. But the political question is if you want to be properly secure, you can't, like, manage a military occupation. <laughs> That's just not going to... You're always going to have security issues if you do that. That's why this fucking Netanyahu security tunnel vision approach for the last 20 years has not worked. It's actually created more insecurity, yeah. Been in Gaza, and October 7th still happened. <sighs> Let's see. Let's see if we're getting Clearly, it's a failure. When will people understand that? ...feel more and more that they have no other option than violence. If they're not turning to Hamas, it's to paramilitary groups like Lion's Den and the Janine Brigades. In Gaza, the collective trauma of Israeli airstrikes and the hopelessness of life under block... Dude, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I don't think Loner Box would ever use the terms that I'm using to describe the situation. Because, like, the things that I say are not exactly... The, no, the things that I say are not exactly seen uh, by a broader liberal audience as... Liberal? As even ...remotely uh, close to the way they see the world. In, in the eyes of, like, the average Western American living in a liberal democracy, they're thinking, like... They're, they're, in, they're in a world of fantasy. They're thinking like, oh yeah, Israel is the greatest democracy in the Middle East. It's the only democracy in the Middle East. What do you mean it's an apartheid state? That sounds kind of anti-Semitic. Like, like, no fucking shot is, is any liberal content creator going to fucking turn around and be like, yeah, no, I think that the Janine Brigade technically has, under international law, a right to exist. That uh, it's not an international law question. I don't care if, it's, I don't care if Janine Brigades are legal or not. Their reason for doing at least some of what they do is because of a failure of policing from the PA and from Israel. And I think that is, to a degree, it's justified, yeah. They can't just do nothing. 
there probably are some th ex like excesses of the Janine Brigade that I wouldn't support, but... Yeah, I've never said that there should be no violence against the occupation. It's a fucking occupation. Like, what the fuck? But I guess I'm just one of those, uh, I'm not like the other liberals. Oh, and apartheid. I made a whole fucking video saying it was apartheid. I gave the argument on that panel, on that kicker key panel, that it was apartheid, like, better than anyone else trying to defend it. Better than fucking Prime Kai sawing out and just screeching the words apartheid in South Africa. I had to fucking save him. I had to rescue him to give a more convincing argument for why you can, it's okay to call it apartheid, for why it's an accurate description of what's happening. Oh, God. That is something that, like, no American is going to believe. They're going to be like, what? But they wear bands. They wear the headbands. It looks a lot like the Hamas headbands. Maybe even the ISIS headbands, actually. They're white. ISIS wears the black and white headbands. They wear the white and black headbands. I have Cuck no way bastard. of comprehending that this is like... This is Mad Flamingo with $1.99. Hassan is enlightened. Bow to his knowledge. This is, this is actually technically both morally permissible and legally justifiable under international law because it's supposed to be their territory. Like... Like, there's no world in which you can describe... It would have probably been clearer if I said that if they're not turning to Hamas... Like... Yeah, I don't know. Because I don't consider... The problem is, is that, like, I think... I don't know if the Janine Brigades are, but I think Lion's Den are supported by Hamas. I think. I don't know if Janine Brigades are. I have this to people. I do think, however, that he could have been more critical of Israel, for sure. And I think, at the end, he, he does get a little bit more critical of Israel, but... Oh, he knows. But, um, I think he could have certainly been more critical... This is exactly why this fucker loner box is so dangerous because some smooth brain chatters in this community. <laughs> Get him, boys. Take him down. Are saying he's based when his arguments are just obfuscated versions of the usual vile Zionist rhetoric. I'm danger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of this money was being diverted to Hamas's military operations. Referring to this story about Qatari funds in 2019, a Labour member of the Knesset eerily stated that Gaza border residents were paying the price for the lack of policy and the arrogance in facing terror. Of course, this bizarre equilibrium. Oh, here. Oh, the Vox articles. Let's go. Anyone who wants to thwart the establishment of a Palestinian state has to support bolstering Hamas, Hamas, and transferring money to Hamas, the Prime Minister reportedly said at a 2019 meeting of his liquid party. This is part of our strategy to isolate the Palestinians in the Gaza from the Palestinians in the West Bank. This is exactly what I said. This is, exact, this is exactly what I said. Okay. Wait, yeah. there's more though. Hold on. The exact comments have not been confirmed by sources. He also said, we, we <laughs> control how high the flames go. He did yeah, I don't think I used this exact quote because it hadn't been confirmed. Although I don't think the Israeli government has denied that quote. Um, yeah. Say that. Couldn't last forever. Last year, Netanyahu was elected prime minister alongside the most right-wing government in Israeli history. His coalition involved the leader of the religious Zionist party, Bezalel Smotrich, and the leader of the Jewish National Front, Itamar- Psycho. Also psychotic. Ben Gavir, perhaps two of the most comically evil people in all of modern democracy, both of whom basically want to- It's not a democracy. It's not a democracy. That's why it's not a democracy. They're fascists. Israel is a fascist, <laughs> Jewish supremacist ethno state. 1,000%. <laughs> it is a theocratic ethno state that is moving on the theocratic, <laughs> theocratic front. Theocratic okay? ethno state. And remember- Bro, they were, they were democratically elected. <laughs> it's a democracy. I don't know what to say. Um, uh, okay. It's not my assessment, okay? <laughs> From where I'm standing, I look to Israel and I go, that motherfucker on the right is Arab. He's an Arab. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean he's, he's Jewish, so he's different than the Palestinian Arabs? Like, he's an Arab. He's half Kurdish, half Arab. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you mean? But according to Israel, according to their own designation, he's Jewish. Therefore, not Arab. Arabs are Palestinian Christians and Palestinian Muslims. To conquer the entire West Bank. And this new government oversaw two crucial policy positions, the rapid expansion of settlements and to weaken the checks and balances system of the Israeli Supreme Court, both of which would reap horrific consequences on October 7th. The result of settlement expansion was, as it always has been, increased violence between the settler community and local Palestinians. Combined with the ambition- I don't even agree with it, like this is a one-to-one. -one. Like, no, the, the result is like literally fucking pogroms. Yeah, he is, he's half Kurdish, half Arab from Iraq. And the rhetoric of Israel's new government, this process. It's, so was put it's on. weird that I can't even say violence between settlers and Palestinians, and like I can't even say that because I need to say that it's the settlers are disproportionately more violent against the Palestinians. I need to like find the fucking stats or whatever. Uh, steroids. 2022 was the deadliest year for Palestinians in the West Bank since 2004. At the start of this year, when a mob of settlers were rioting through the city of Huara, Smotrich was calling for the town to be wiped out. Although he would- <laughs> It's a slip of the tongue. Later say this was a slip of the tongue. Yeah, I hate it when that happens.
It's really gross how this dude Lonerbox just makes little jokes about how genocidal and fascist Israel is while not even acknowledging that he's claiming they uphold a democ. Hassan laughed at that joke as well. It's funny that he said it was a misspeak. Fuck off. All right. The IDF had become increasingly more focused on the West Bank than on Gaza. And now, after October 7th, it seems likely that this stretched them too thin and left gaps in their security. As for the judicial reforms, well, we know that they sparked some of the biggest and most drawn out protests in Israeli history. And we also know that hundreds of IDF reservists were refusing to show up for duty in direct protest. Yeah, I'm sorry, but these motherfuckers weren't doing that because personally they were like, oh yeah, we have an apartheid state. They were doing that because they were like, oh, we want to still be secular. And it's, it's, always, it's always coming back to the apartheid state. Always. Don't forget the apartheid state. I know. I know they didn't do it in protest of Palestinian rights. They did it because they wanted their fucking liberalism or whatever the fuck. Gross, yeah. in the way that you're conducting internal affairs now. Okay? And you cannot separate the two. You can't literally look at a situation where you're like, oh, well, the apartheid state is fine. Like, or maybe it's bad. We'll talk about how bad it is in the settlements. While simultaneously fucking being like, I'm actually real mad that you're taking away my secular Supreme Court so I can't, like, have a fucking uh, secular apartheid state. You know? It just doesn't work that way. The two go hand in hand. And in those protests, as Volibear uh, Zlibiansky uh, I think the one criticism I'll probably take from Hassan here that I, I think is probably fair is that I don't think conflating Hamas with the Janine Brigades and uh, fucking Lions Den was a good idea. That was probably, could have worded that in a different way that didn't have to include those two um, because it did make it sound like I was opposed to violence completely, which is maybe a bit silly. But everything else from the 25,000 people... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel this video was actually fine. Neither he nor Hamas ever wanted peace. Both of them depended on keeping their people scared, keeping them opposed to peace. And Bro, they're not like a real political entity. Like, if anything, they have a government. Uh, they are. They're a de facto government that's got funding coming from like Qatar, from Iran, from Russia. Uh, yeah, they're a political entity. Yeah, they're not like a fucking recognized state, but they're a de facto. Go yeah. Civilian faction that, that has to engage in civil society. But this is not like a. Like, there's no, you can't both sides this. Like, I, I don't think that there is any both siding this. Okay? You can't, you couldn't both sides this. And I think this is the problem is I need to maybe summarize this better. Um, you can't both sides it if it's just Israelis and Palestinians. That's 100% true. You can both sides it when it is Israel, when it's uh, Hamas that is backed by Iran, that has friends in Hezbollah, that is backed by, that is backed by fucking Russia, that um, is backed by Qatar. Yeah, that you can probably both sides it when there's that kind of like, that, that does introduce like a much more complex interaction. Yeah. This does not exist without this. This certainly also, it doesn't. This can still not. This can still doesn't necessarily suggest that both sides have equal power. It doesn't. This without this, okay? Some other form of this still exists without this. Damn, really? That's the problem, because Israeli policy has been consistent. It has always been consistent, and only under that policy, where you carefully maintain an apartheid, where you have this, like. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty simple, too. Like, let's say you kill him, okay? Let's say you kill every Hamas leader. Let's say you blow out the tunnel system. Okay? Let's say you do all of that. Okay. Do you think that, like, the rest of the Palestinians are going to be like, thank you so much. We loved when you killed my family. I personally loved when you blew up my fucking school, and then you blew up my hospital, and then you blew up the, the fucking food supply, and when you blew up the fucking water supply, when you told me I can't have any water whatsoever... He said he wasn't doing the Israel as a small bean shit, but he totally is. When you called me a human animal, I love that. I'm so glad that you've rid me of Hamas now. I will welcome you with open arms. This is fucking insane. This is a fucking insane thing to claim. Like, please, just investigate it a little bit further beyond the talking points, and you will recognize that that is not how this goes, okay? Um, I don't really know if he's addressing me. He's not. He's not really. Like, there is no <laughs> equal ground between Hamas and, and Benjamin Netanyahu. There isn't. It's ridiculous. I don't think I'm saying that. I'm saying that they feed into each other to make uh, to produce a situation where peace is impossible. That doesn't mean they're both equal. Why would that? Why would you assume that? Why would you assume I'm saying that? <laughs> it's just okay. Imagine trusting what Loner Puck says. I guess. <laughs> This person used to be one of my viewers. This I remember Taco Light 16. I I didn't expect this high level of Zionist apologia from Lonerbox. He's friends with a South African Zionist. 
Bro. Bro. I didn't expect this high level of Zionist apology from Logan Brox's friends with the <laughs> South African Zionists. I, I wouldn't, I mean, I think like this at least shows the events. Uh, it, it at least like tells the events, but I think that there are a lot of key details that are missing from it. Um, I, I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, we tried, guys. Anyone dump his knockback like the video did and no mention of the apartheid is all pro Zionist? Yeah, I don't know why he didn't mention the, the word apartheid. I. I have an entire video on okay the apartheid argument like the apartheid argument is mostly i think it's mostly uh describes what happens in uh um in west bank that's what apartheid like is probably the best term for i think for gaza like we, we have words we mentioned blockade we mentioned uh control over the border we mentioned fucking uh like the war crimes yeah it's I don't know. Got to say the word apartheid more often. Yeah. Uh, I think it's decently fair. It tries a little too hard to be seen as unbiased. I think in a situation like this, it does try to be seen as unbiased. I, I agree with you. But if you try to be unbiased when it's an apartheid, it's going to come across like you're doing apologia for the actually, yeah. um, the actually violent entity. Not to say that Hamas is not violent. Of course okay. it is. But that violence is born out of the violence of the apartheid. He's trying to seem unbiased. He has a video about Israel being an apartheid. Yeah, no, I, I know he's not. I don't think he's a Zionist. At least hey. from what he's told me, he's not. And um, I think that... Hey! <sighs> Stay mad, Hassan Chat. I think chat. that this video... This video, Fucking... however, uh, relies on... Relies on a lot of sources that um, show the situation as though it's like kind of out of Israel's hands. Like, it leans a little too much, in my opinion, on Israel's security concerns have necessitated this situation. Uh, I, uh, hmm. I watch you guys all the time. You guys are going like 95% of shit. Yeah, no, I, I, I think so as well. On this issue, especially. Like, the major distinction between me and him is that I, one, don't spend a lot of time talking about, like, uh, Hamas's... He literally called you for the band because us, Chad, are China Sims, and also, that's why he was surprised that you praising him. I'm, I don't... <laughs> That talking point is still going. That I tried to get him banned because the chatter China simps. I thought I was worried that I'd misspoken in that clip, but I didn't even misspeak. It was just like I just didn't say it. I just said I was saying that um, it was to do with people calling for Destiny to be deplatformed, and then there were people in chat. I can't remember what the context was exactly, but there were people in chat talking about fucking extremist opinions. I'm like, bro, you know, like Hassan's chat's got a bunch of fucking tankies in there, and it's only a matter of time before Twitch, an American platform, considers that extremist and bans Hassan. Right? It's, it's not a good argument. So it doesn't mean I wanted it to happen. Okay, okay. I don't give a shit, dude. I don't care. There's plenty of fucking content creators out there that have said uh, horrible shit about me. If hey. someone is personally making uh, uh, a, a video that is like historically factual, I'm still going to praise it. Woo. <laughs> Stay mad, Hassan chat, you fucking droogs. But I do think that, I, I do think that it's like, it's trying to be as even-handed as possible. Did this guy shit on you for your crane stuff? Uh, I think he did, but I've never watched it, and I most likely will not. And hey. I don't even care. Um, I don't. Like, there's a lot of, um, there is a lot of information in here that's good to know. But if yeah. you didn't know anything and you arrived at this and you watched it, I feel like your takeaway would probably be that uh, your takeaway would probably come across as, well, Israel does have a right to defend itself, and this is like Israel's security concerns that have like accidentally created. Um, Hassan, it's really big. <laughs> Here he is. Mike. Hassan Abi, it's really big of you to say that. He's probably one of the biggest debate pervert fluffers out there, always trying to attack people that don't like them. Mike. Mike, you, how lacking in self-awareness do you have to, you pathetic, greasy, <laughs> miserable, little fucking half-human, like I don't, you worm, you rodent, you writhing mollusk. You couch puncher.
Oh, well. You weak shell of a man. <laughs> I don't... The guy who raided me, like, two years ago, and then I was very open with him that I wasn't his biggest fan, that I was a friend of, like, Dylan and Vosh and all that shit, and he told his chat to leave after raiding me. He told the raiders to leave. <laughs> Mike from PA. Wait, should we find the clip? Let's find, the, let's find one of his moments. That's fine. I think that's fine. So if a guy pays for my tab... I think they... I, I'm just... I'm, I'm getting your attention. <laughs> like I touched... Like uh, a vampire touching holy water. Can I help you? I think they want to go in. Okay. Yeah. Let's just do a few more, eh? We got any more? The couch gets demolished at around 918. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just, it's necessary, you know? It's necessary. If we're gonna, if we're gonna, hey, listen, if we're gonna say some fighting words here, you're gonna call me a debate pervert fluffer. Well, okay. Debate avoiding nonce. Let's go. I think she was bullying him for like nine minutes. Uh, yeah. 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 That just feels good. Oh my god. Just feels good. Why is this couch now moved? Did you just hit the couch? I just just nudged it. Oh shit! They're here. <laughs> oh. Okay. I just <laughs> accidentally created a, a situation that like became really violent or something like that. So overall, I don't even think he agrees with that assessment. Yeah. And I think that true. The way you handled KB was fantastic. You proved me wrong 100%. <sighs> KB, but this isn't the same. I don't think. Hopefully, I'm wrong though. Oh, knowing better. Yeah. You look public transport, infrastructure spending, and suddenly... Lorna Box consistently equivocates... That's not what equivocate means. Um, Hamas and the IDF as comparable evils. Uh, I don't really. I think Hamas are actually a lot worse than the IDF. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the question I would always ask is, what would um, the IDF and Hamas do if they had the same amount of military power? <laughs> Who would cause more damage? Um, yeah, I'll take, I'll take the lib hat for that one, actually. Yeah, I will wear the lib hat. I'll get the lib badge. I'll get the lib fucking Twitter profile. You're trying to simp, even if you denounce social. Get my lib socks. Yeah. Anyway, my point is this. I think this is like trying to spare the feelings of a lot of people, this video in and of itself. And I think it does a disservice to good Ooh. analysis oh. in an effort to capitulate and in an effort to come across as like not as aggressive as it should be. And I think that it should be aggressive, like way more aggressive because the circumstance is completely- I mean, I think that he's saying that is probably fine because I didn't want to, like, he's basically like, he's saying, uh, yeah, he wants it to be partisan, but I don't, I didn't want to be partisan. I wanted, to, I knew I had a lot of fucking new Israeli viewers because of me shitting on the Hamas supporters. And I was like, I want to tell you like my left leaning perspective on this. Uh, but I noticed that when I made that Netanyahu video, um, the fact that I mentioned the Dar Yassin massacre had fucking liberal Israelis, <laughs> liberal Israelis, and my fucking replies like, um, uh, oh, I can't believe you uh, mentioned the Dar Yassin massacre. You don't even know the context. I'm like, bro, this is like a fucking 40-year-old debunked horseshit claim that Dar Yassin was like, had more context behind it outside of it being a massacre, that it was like, people think, it, people used to think it was a battle. But even Benny Morris, like, quite clearly states that it wasn't um yeah i don't know did you gain any subs off of his react yeah like a couple of hundred not many just a few hundred a few nice comments completely unacceptable morally it's not legally permissible it is immoral so um trying to talk about it with terms steven francis thanks for tier one sub so uh uh trying to get trying to talk about it in the way that that he talked about it I think does a disservice to to good analysis that I I think he he is is uh, not only capable of but Hassan Abi. There's a word for what he is cowardly, bro. If this fucking 
slimy, miserable, fucking invertebrate cuck piece of shit had any idea how fucking difficult it is to exist in a position where I am too left wing for most of, for even a lot of the liberals, where especially the right wingers, and where I'm too not fucking whatever the fuck soy bullshit this guy's on to please his crowd. Is it? I don't know. I feel like it's not that easy out here. You know, I don't really fit in any of these weird camps. Whereas you, all you have to do is Google what's the left wing opinion on the news today. You get it. It's very simplistic. It's some of it's kind of a little bit factually inaccurate. You scream. Everything is caused by capitalism, and you're good. You're fine. I used to make content like that. I I know it's so fucking easy. You can be wrong. You can be inaccurate. But if you fucking give those far left people on the internet what they want, you're fine. You're you're fucking poof, zooming. Used to? Yeah, I used to be a lot more partisan in my videos, yeah. But has uh, these opinions. Like, I don't think this... You will not arrive at his, like, actual accurate opinion from watching this video because it's trying to be as neutral as possible. And if, especially when you're using, like, Jerusalem Post or, or uh, you know, Wikipedia exclusively that covers a lot of the... I, um, covers a lot no, of the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I did not. What the fuck, dude? No, don't say that. Like, come on. <laughs> Jerusalem Post and Wikipedia. Okay, that's that's just not true. That's just that's just not facts. These are not the facts. Earth as though it's just like Hamas is just launching rockets. Hamas is just launching rockets, and they're like a, a, a violent. They're a, they're like a rudderless ship, and they're just simply violent for the sake of violence, and they're not even thinking about anything. Like they don't have any. Um, they're not engaging from an act of like. Um, they're not. They're not making any. They're not making any tactical decisions, no matter how fucking wrong or brutal or violent they may be. Right. And I get that because I'm the type of person who. He posted a deleted tweet with Lorna Box saying that Israel is semi-right about Palestinians. <laughs> oh god, okay, it's fine, it's fine. Hassan doesn't believe that though, because he's like, a bit better than that. He's, well, he's a lot better than that actually, fuck. Um, that's a huge difference, the difference between man and beast. Um, Alright, whatever. I think there was maybe one criticism in there that I thought was probably fair. The rest of them I don't necessarily agree with, uh, you know. I'm glad we could have this healthy disagreement in the marketplace of ideas without pigeonholing each other into the worst possible extremes. Ah, uh, nice one. It's actually a pretty enjoyable experience. I don't even know if it's the majority of the chat. Like, I can't tell because there's so many of them, but <laughs> there's, a, there's a noticeable population in there who are the dumbest cunts. I feel like the Hassan loner box beast process is actually, uh, it's, uh, it's smooth sailing. It's still, uh, it's still going strong. <laughs> no matter how much these Hamas, ag literally fucking Hamas agitators try to ruin it. <laughs> that's not even an analogy. They actually, that's not even a fucking metaphor. They are Hamas fucking people. Yeah. Anyway. Does Hassan even notice Mike's comments? <laughs> he probably notices like 3% of them. Yeah. That was fun. Uh, uh, Hassan, I appreciate the, the review. Don't really agree with most of those critiques. Uh, one or two of them I thought were probably fair. Uh, Hassan's chat. Listen, keep on, keep on spreading that fake tweet around. You know, you'll get him one day. Uh, I love it that in your efforts to destroy me and to end the Loner Box Hassan beast process, you basically just make yourselves look fucking so <laughs> unlikable and <laughs> like impossible to take seriously. So I guess if you try harder, it'll just kind of like feed back in, in an even worse way. So you know, keep it up.